What is up guys? My name is Harry Rice and welcome back to the channel. Today is day 25, Christmas, the final video in 25 days of Harry. It's finally over guys. 25 videos in a row. I am incredibly excited to get through it and as you could probably tell by the title, by the intro that just happened, and probably by the outro of every video if you stayed until then and heard the not so subtle hints I'm going to be doing my top 100 favorite movies of all time f for the 2019 edition I did it last year but uh, I only did 50 <laughs> and honestly I <sighs> I'm just so excited. We are going to get right into the list. But first, actually, right before I begin, I have a big stack of DVDs right here. Uh, so when I have a, when a movie comes up that I have on DVD, uh, I'll hold it up or whatever, show it to the camera or whatever. Uh, but I'm just warning you, this video is completely unscripted. Anything I say about the movies um, is completely unscripted. So, yeah, let's get into it. Number 100, The Devil's Rejects from 2005. This is a very, very messed up movie. Uh, it's Rob Zombie's, I want to say his second movie, second or third. Uh, technically, it's a, uh, uh, it's, it's a sequel to House of a Thousand Rejects, or excuse me, House of a Thousand Corpses, but um, it doesn't really follow the same plot, for, uh, per se. It doesn't follow, it doesn't, can, it doesn't, the movie begins not as a sequel, but rather as its own movie with the same characters as House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, you're not going to see House of a Thousand Corpses on here just because I haven't seen it yet. Who knows, maybe if we go to a thousand, I'll be cute and have number movie 1000 be the House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, but yeah, House of a Thousand Corpses, an incredibly, really, really good movie. At least in my opinion, uh, I particularly enjoy uh, this movie. Um, it's got a great, great cast. It's, it's a, like I said, it's a very, very messed up movie. So some parts of this movie, if you watch it, you probably will not like. Um... For me, there's not anything that I didn't like in the movie because uh, I'm very, very desensitized uh, to that type of stuff. So I can very, very much watch uh, a majority of stuff. If it's something like, though, if it's something involving like fingers, like fingers getting snapped or um, our teeth getting pulled, something like that, I'm very, very squeamish to that. For a lot of stuff I can handle, but stuff involving like fingers and teeth. That I can't handle for some reason, so. Uh, and of course, Sid Haig. Sid Haig is the best in this movie. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to I'm, I'm going to explain the plots of some of these, but uh, some of these I'm probably going to leave unknown. Uh, but The Devil's Rejects is basically about three uh, people uh, who, who, who come together and they're just very messed up individuals. They remind me very much of the Manson family in a way. Uh, when they just go around, they, they torture people, they kill people. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very disturbing movie to some people. Um, so I wouldn't recommend seeing it if you're very, very squeamish or you're like, oh no, I don't, I don't like seeing this. Uh, but if you're like me and you're very, very messed up yourself and you're very desensitized, check it out. Devil's Rejects, number 100. Coming in at number 99 is Shrek 2 from 2004. Pretty much the exact opposite of The Devil's Rejects. And this is the first movie of many that I'm going to show that I have on DVD. Um, I saw this movie when I was first a little baby boy. Uh, I want to say I was about four or five when I saw this. Um, I, uh, 2005, so yeah, I would have been three. Yeah, it would have been, yeah, been three. I want to say we had this, the original DVD, where it was this poster. I'm pretty sure it was this poster. This poster was the original DVD. Um, uh, and yeah, I had that. Original DVD, sadly, because I was a stupid little kid, I scratched it to all hell. We had to get rid of it. I ended up getting it again, thankfully. Um, but Shrek 2, it's a fun movie. Obviously, it's a sequel to Shrek, which is meme to hell and back. It won't be on the list, sadly. But um, uh, but yeah, Shrek 2. Uh, of course, all-star cast. Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, um, Cameron Diaz. Why can't I think of anyone? Antonio, Antonio Banderas. I can't think of anyone else. Jennifer Coolidge, I believe. Uh, not Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, I can't think of her name. Uh, Rupert Everest, Jennifer Sanders plays the fairy godmother. Uh, very, very all-star cast. John Cleese, I believe, is in this as the, uh, uh, yep, he is. And Julie, Julie, Julie Andrews, fantastic, fantastic cast. Shrek 2, it's a very, very funny movie in my opinion, so please check it out. 
Coming in at number 98 is 5050. This is a movie with Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon Levitt, Anna Kendricks, and uh, Anna Kendrick, and uh, Bryce, Dill uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, it's a very, very good movie. Um, though I gotta be honest, I think the only down part about this movie, um, at least in my opinion, is Seth Rogen. Um, I love Seth Rogen. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, one of my favorite actors, uh, as you could probably tell by the list that was done previously to this one. Uh, but Joseph Gordon-Levitt, love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Seth Rogen, I even like him. I like a lot of his movies. There's going to be a few Seth Rogen movies on this list. Um, but him in this movie, along with a lot of the stoner comedies he's in, at least that I find, he very much, um, not underperforms, but he very much plays it for comedic and not dramatic. Here he does have a few dramatic moments, which is really good. I like that. Um, but... Seth Rogen does not at all ruin this movie. He takes it down a few notches. It probably would be around maybe 90 or so, I would say, if uh, if either Seth Rogen was cast differently or if he play, if his character is played a little more for dramatic uh, purposes rather than comedic. Um, but basically, it's a movie about Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. He ends up getting uh, cancer, and it's pretty much him trying to deal with the fact that he has cancer and cope with it. It's very much like funny people I've heard, except... A little, probably more funny than funny people, which is just depressing, I've heard. Uh, so 50-50 makes number 98 on the list. It's a pretty good movie. Coming in at number 97 is the Peanuts movie. This is from 2015, and of course, uh, this is a movie I have on DVD. By the way, if you guys saw my DVD collection, you're more than likely going to see uh, all these movies, except for two, actually. Two, uh, two, I believe. I'm pretty sure, yeah, two of these are actually not, were not shown in the DVD collection yet, so exclusive in this video once you get to this but yeah peanuts movie i have it on dvd technically also on digital because it comes with a digital copy uh but yeah basically it's a it's pretty much uh peanuts it's the peanuts characters charlie brown snoopy linus uh sally and all of them a uh, the little red haired girl of course which uh sadly they spoil her look in this poster i think i'm not 100 percent sure but i feel like they might um but yeah pretty much um Pretty much, it's 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 peanuts. It's the peanuts gang. Uh, obviously, focuses on Charlie Brown. He's trying to get uh, his dick wet by the little redhead, little red hair girl. I probably just spoiled. A I just probably ruined a lot of people's childhoods, and I do not mind it at all. Um, but yeah, peanuts movie. It's a fun, quirky little little fun movie. I check it out personally, or check it out if I were you. Please, thank you very. much. Coming in at number 96, uh, I believe, just let me check real quick. Yes, coming in at number 96 is Wind River, and I pulled this out just beforehand. Uh, I do have this one on DVD. Like I said, if, you, if you've if you seen my DVD collection, you know that I have uh, a lot of these movies on DVD. Uh, but yeah, Wind River, Jeremy Renner, and Elizabeth Olsen, a Avengers reunion of sorts, uh, despite the fact that, that obviously... Um, They'd kind of been in Avengers. That they'd been separated for maybe less than a month at this point, because I know movies are filmed very close together. Uh, but yeah, it, it, this movie is about Jeremy Renner's character. He's um, uh, he's like a, a sheriff of, or a, he's a police officer of some type, and he's in a in native territory. He's in a, or he has to go to a native uh, Native American type of tr uh, not tribe, but a territory, and um, and Elizabeth Olsen's character is is an FBI agent who's hired. Uh, to come down to the same area by Jeremy Renner, and they're both hired to investigate the murder of, uh, of a native woman, um, and it's it's a really really good movie. It's it's very much realistic, at least for the most part, I believe. Uh, there's definitely one scene that I think would definitely turn a lot of people off of this movie if you knew what it was. I'm not gonna say because it's very spoilery, um, but I'm just gonna say there's a reason the movie is rated R, and yeah, my best friend actually watched this with me uh, herself. She had to warn me, like, hey, you're fine with this. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am. I'm, I'm, no, I'm fine with it. But, like, I, I can I can, I can, can watch it in a movie and be fine. Um, which is ironic because one movie we'll get to very later in the countdown, there's a scene that I almost wanted to turn, off, turn it off once I watched it. But we'll get there when I get there. Uh, Wind River, please check it out. It's a very, very good movie in my opinion. Coming in at number 95, we have The Night Before. Uh, of course, another Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Seth Rogen movie. They seem to really like working together, it seems. Uh, this one also featuring Anthony Mackie in it. Not featuring, but he is in the movie. Uh, this one is about Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. He uh, wants to celebrate Christmas the same way he has for the past 14 years with his two best friends, played by Rogen and Mackie. 
Um, and basically, they've always wanted to go to this thing called the Nutcracker Ball. Joseph Gordon-Levitt gets tickets. I'm not going to say how because it's kind of funny how he does. Um, but he gets tickets to it, and it's basically their journey on getting there and all the antics along the way. It's not one of the. It's not like a raunchy sex comedy. It's not like Bad Santa. Uh, but it's a very, very, very good movie in my opinion. I really, really like it. Um, yeah, I check it out. Uh, it, it's an R-rated movie. One of the few funny R-rated comedies of the 21st century of the 2000s, I should say, or 2010s, excuse me. Um, I think the only funny R-rated movie. Uh, from the 2000s as well, technically, if you're lumping in, if you're, if you're lumping in the past 20 years, which we're going back to 99, technically, I think this is one of the only funny R-rated comedies from that time period, uh, but yeah, The Night Before, oh, sorry, The 40 Year Old Virgin's also in that category, I don't know how I forgot it, it's not on the list, but I, I was looking at my DVD shelf time to find another, and 40 Year Old Virgin, but, yeah, Night Before is on the list, and 40 Year Old Virgin isn't, so, yeah, uh, check it out, I'd love to get this one on DVD, sadly I don't have it. Night before, check it out. Coming in at number 94 is Dead Poet Society. This is a movie from 1988 uh, starring Robin Williams. Um, this is a movie that is very, very good. Uh, it's not top 50, top 25, or top 10 good, uh, in my opinion. Uh, some people it is. For example, my best friend, this is one of her favorite movies. Um, but per for me personally, there's I've seen too many good movies that honestly, I don't think I could put this above number 94 as of right now. Who knows, maybe, maybe, who knows, maybe I'll see this movie in the future and I'll think, you know what, damn, that's top 10 or top 20 or whatever, top mm, worthy. Um, but yeah, Dead Poet Society, it's a pretty good movie. Basically, Robin Williams is the teacher, uh, or he's hired to be the teacher of this, um, of this, I, I guess it's sort of a boarding school, it's more of a, it's a private school, really. Um, and with his students, he ends up uh, very much bonding with them and teaching them about, um, not teaching them about life, but teaching them that, you know, class is able to be more than just come, learn, leave, um, pretty much. I'm explaining it very poorly, but you'd have to check out the movie yourself. Uh, please do so. It's a very, very good movie. The ending is a little cliched, for my, in my opinion, but hey, it's a good movie. It's Rob Williams. Please, check it out. Coming in at number 93 is Good Will Hunting. This is a 1997 movie starring Rob Williams and Matt Damon, and this is another one that I own on DVD. Uh, I do not own this cover, sadly. I own, obviously this cover, um, but yeah, one of the best uh, Robin Williams movies in my opinion, uh, one of the best Matt Damon movies, funny enough, I think actually the only Matt Damon movie on the list, uh, despite him being one of my favorite actors, I think, I don't think he made the top 30 list, I'm recording this before the top 30 list, by the way, so, uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's a really, really good movie, it's about uh, Matt Damon, pretty much, who, it, it is about Matt Damon, who finds out that, or who who's a, pretty much a math genius, he, um, he, like I said, he's, he's a math genius, and he's very, very poor. He doesn't have enough money to attend the school he's janitoring at, and uh, basically he he commits some type of crime. I'm not gonna say what what exactly it is, because uh, it's pretty crucial to the plot, in my opinion, at least. Um, but basically, he ends up having to go to this counselor played by Robin uh, Robin Williams, and they end up bonding and discovering not the meaning of life, but discovering there's more than uh, just, just pretty much just, uh, uh, therapist and, lo and, 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 and therapy or, or me whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, just watch the movie, please go to a hunting as with all of these movies. Cause I'm probably going to fuck up the meaning on all of them. Just check out these movies. Good will hunting. Very, very good. In my opinion, one, probably Matt Damon's best performance in my, coming in at number 92 is flushed away. Uh, this is a movie that. There's another movie that I actually do have on DVD. Yeah. I just realized I'm 16 minutes into the recording and I've gotten through eight movies. This is going to be three hours before I know it. Uh, but yeah, Flushed Away. Uh, this is a, a DreamWorks movie and Ardman. Love Ardman. Uh, and don't let the thing at the top of the poster from the creators of Shrek and Madagascar turn you off. This is a great animated film. It stars uh, Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet. Uh, which is kind of funny because they would later go on to be in mov movie for... We don't, we don't talk about that movie here. Um, but, yeah, pretty much it stars Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet. I'm pretty sure Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet. Let me check the credits really quick. Or not the credits, but the... Ah, uh, oh, damn it, I can't check it out. But, yeah, um, Flushed Away, starring Kate Winslet and... Or Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet, I'm pretty sure. Uh, basically, Hugh Jackman plays a rat uh, played by 
Hugh Jackman. I'm going to say Hugh Jackman a ton right now. Um, who gets flushed down his master's uh, toilet by this little fucker up here. Um, and ends up running into Rita, played by Kate Winslet. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much them trying to get Roddy, Roddy back up to the, to the surface. Uh, it's a really, really good animated film, in my opinion. Uh, one of my favorites. There's probably some that I'm forgetting that are on the list, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, like I said, it's one of my favorites. Uh, flushed away. Please check it out. Coming in at number 91 is Wilson. Uh, this is a Woody Harrelson film, which would explain why I love it. Uh, R-rated. I didn't realize it's R-rated. One of the funny R-rated comedies of this year. Oh, that's why I didn't know, because it's 14 plus in Canada. And this is a, another one that I have on DVD. Sadly, this was not a poster, which... I honestly don't know why it wasn't a poster. Probably, um, probably would have been the only good poster for this movie. And I honestly think that's why when it was at the theater... It wasn't, uh, it wasn't probably, it probably, not tanked, but it wasn't, did, didn't do as good as most people thought, because look at that poster, it, it really sucks, and this is a very, very small scene in the movie, um, but yeah, Wilson, it's about Woody Harrelson's character, he wants to find his long-lost daughter, or his, uh, his, 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 his daughter's wife to find his daughter, um, and I'm, I'm just gonna stop there, it's, it's a, it's a pretty funny movie, I find it to be pretty funny, uh, Wilson, Check it out. Coming in at number 90 is Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And of course, this is another one, if I can get it out, that I have on DVD. For some reason, I wrote on the cover. I don't know why. This is the two-disc uh, supersized edition that came with... Uh, it came with a, 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 a umbrella, but I sadly never found the umbrella. This, along with uh, Peanuts movie, are two just two of the films that I've seen in theaters that are on this list. Um, I saw this 10 years ago. I remember the day very vividly. It was a, uh, I want to say it was in August. Um, and basically my mom and my dad, um, they, they like did something. And, uh, I remember they told me you can either go see this movie today or you can get KFC. Um, cause, cause they were running an ad at the time, uh, where like, I think if you get chicken, you get a, a Simpsons figurine or something. I was like, oh, I want to see the movie. I want to see the movie. Not realizing that they were probably going to take me later in the week if I said KFC. Ten years later, hashtag I regret. Um, no, but seriously, I loved this movie every minute of it. Sadly, it was me and my mom. Dad stayed home. I guess he did get KFC or something. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, Claudio with a Chance of Meatballs. It stars Bill Hader and Anna Ferris, which I never even realized that was Bill Hader until like last year. Um, basically, it's or pretty much last year. I, I forget. We're still in 2019 this year. Um, unless you're watching this in 2020 or future, then 2019. Um, but it's a very, very weird movie, but it's very, very funny. It's about Bill Hader's character. Uh, I believe his name is Finn, if I remember correctly. Finn, um, who, uh, is a scientist and he's always wanted to get approval from his dad. And he figures out basically a way to get, um, basically he figures out a way to get, um, food to rain out of the sky. And I'm, I'm going to stop there. Basically, I won't say hilarity ensues, but basically it's it's a very, very interesting and original uh, animated film. And honestly, only a, fil a film that could only work being animated. And I don't want to say CG, but being animated. Because stop motion probably could have made this movie. Uh, you, or you probably could have made this movie and stop stop motion. But animated and the, the style it's in, I really like it. Cloudy Chance of Meatballs, please check it out. Great film. Coming up next, number 89, is Motherless Brooklyn. This is a movie that I obviously do not have because it's still in theaters, or at least as of recording this, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, this is a very, very good movie. It's probably, it's very, not very, it's, it's a little, um, not weird, but it's a little complicated or confusing to understand. Um, but once you think about it, it's like, oh, okay, 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 this. It's not like a movie that goes chronologically out of order, unless I've been thinking about it wrong and it actually is, but I, I don't think so. Um, but, but with the plot points and what's given to you, um, I don't want to say it's spoon fed to you, but it's, it's very much like you find out along with the main character played, played amazingly by Edward Norton. Definitely top three is in his performances, at least in my opinion, which anyone who knows me or saw the list, uh, of my favorite actors knows Edward Norton is one of my favorite actors. And the fact this is top three and the fact I saw it in theaters, I'm very happy to have seen it in theaters with, um, with the voc the performance he gave, which funny thing, I actually saw this with my mom and dad. Uh, dad went out to the theater, I want to say for the first time, probably in 25 years, I think, and he saw this movie with us, 
And even he said he's not that big of a fan of Edward Norton. The only movie he likes of Edward Norton's is the score, I think. Um, he even said he even he said Edward Norton deserves the Oscar for Best Actor for this movie. My dad and it's hard to get approval from my dad for that type of thing. So, Mother's Brooklyn, please check it out. That's I'm not even gonna say anything about the plot. Just please check it out. Coming in at number 88 is Lost in London. Technically, it's Lost in London Live. Uh, but this is a 2017 film starring Woody Harrelson and technically Woody Harrelson uh, with cameos from Owen Wilson and Willie Nelson. This is a fantastic film in the sense that not only was it done completely in one take, or at least I'm pretty sure completely in one take, um, but done live. As, as it says here, the first film ever broadcast live. This, that is insane. And honestly... I am so happy I bootlegged this film because you can't get it anywhere. You can't buy it on DVD as far as I know. You can only get it off like Amazon Prime or something like that. Um, hashtag, let's get the hashtag uh, Lost in London on DVD, uh, please. Or hashtag put Lost in London on DVD, please. Thank you very much. Uh, but this is a fantastic, this is, on I almost say it's a filmmaking marvel. I don't want to go that far. But it's definitely going to influence future films, I think, that people are going to be like, Wow, Lost in London did this live. What could we do? And I think Woody Harrelson, because this is based on an incident from Woody Harrelson's past from 2002, I believe. A 2002 club. Um, no, but no, but but seriously, it's um, it's it's a movie that, in my opinion, at least, um, I think really could. I think Woody Harrelson, who pretty much created this film, had uh, pure creative control over this movie, uh, is going to show. Um, I think it's basically going to prove you can do a movie live, and I think a lot more people are going to be doing a movie live from now on, thanks to this movie. Uh, Lost in London, please check it out. Coming in at number 87 is Baby Driver, and of course, as with a lot of movies, I own this one on Blu-ray and actually DVD. The DVD is already packed though, sadly, but yeah, Blu-ray. Uh, don't mean to own the DVD, but I do. Uh, this is a, an incredibly fun movie. It's an Edgar Wright movie, so of course you know it's going to be awesome and it's going to be badass and fun. Uh, and this one obviously is. Um, it stars Anson Elgott, uh, Kevin Spacey's in it, uh, John Hamm, Jamie Foxx, Lily James, and uh, Isaac Gonzalez. And basically, uh, Elson Elgott play, plays Baby. He's a not a hitman, but he's a he's he's a driver for for not hitmen either. It's like heist, heist, heisters. That's what I'm gonna say. That's probably not even a word. Uh, but it's basically him. He he meets this girl, um, Deborah, and he he basically he's trying to do his final heist, uh, and then get out of the the business. Uh, but like it, it ends up going wrong, and uh, or they're planning for the final heist. It doesn't go wrong. They're planning for it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, really good movie. Uh, I'm not going to say much about it because, uh, as it is in, in the Edgar Wright film, it's incredibly well made. I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack that goes along with this film is amazing. I love that, like, every, like, on every beat of every song, it seems, the movie is going at that pace. Um, Baby Driver, please, I cannot recommend it enough. Even though it's not, it's a, it's only 87, it's still a really good movie. Baby Driver, please check it out. Coming in at number 86 is The Wolverine from 2013. This is the uh, second attempt at a Wolverine solo movie. And it, it works pretty well, at least in my opinion. It works much better than X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, this time it's the Wolverine, he's in Japan. Actually, I don't know if it's a Wolver it's an origin story. I don't know if I said that, but uh, it's, it's, it's a Wolverine solo movie, I should say. Uh, and this one is bad ass and of course because it is uh i have it on on uh, dvd i believe this is rated r it's 14 plus in canada so i'm just gonna assume it's rated r um yeah this is part of that big uh dvd unboxing i did uh for my for this channel actually no last channel i forgot which channel it was <laughs> um but uh but yeah the wolverine it's it's a badass movie the wolverine's in japan like i said I can't say enough good things about this movie. Please, just check it out. It's a great, badass comic book flick. Wolverine, pretty badass. Coming in at number 85 is It, technically chapter 1. 
uh, from 2017. I've not seen Chapter 2 yet, but from, from Chapter 1, it's a really, really good movie. I honestly went in uh, with expectations that I was going to... That I was gonna hate this film. Uh, funny thing, I actually remember seeing um, I think the Amazing Atheist video ranting about um, I think it's Bill Skarsgård, uh, Bill Skarsgård um, on 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 YouTube, obviously, and how he responded to um, to one of one of uh, the Amazing Atheists about how Bill responded to one of the Amazing Atheists comments about. The movie's gonna look off. The movie's gonna be awful just from looking at production pictures, which I think everyone did. I think everyone, when they first saw the production pictures and the pictures of Pennywise, they were like, "That's not Pennywise. What the fuck are you doing, the Pennywise?" And even I, having never seen the ninety, the nineteen ninety version, only seen clips, I was like, "That's not Pennywise." Um, but then the movie came out and it got really good reviews, and I was like, "Oh, okay, maybe it's probably it's probably just a jump scare fest, and everyone." Loves their jump scare fests. But then when my best friend, who hates jump scares like me, said, Oh, it's really good. You should check it out. I was like, okay. Uh, sat down. We watched it one uh, one day. And I got 15 minutes in. I was like, yeah, it's I'm, it's not doing it for me. And so we stopped watching. I went back, tried to watch it a few days later. Got about five minutes. And I was like, no, I don't like this. Uh, and then finally, I think it was a few months later, or like uh, six months later, I was like, you know what? You know what? Um, you know what? Screw it. I'm ready to try this again. Uh, and so we sat down, we got It Chapter 1 loaded up, and we watched it, and I really liked it. Um, I really liked uh, Sophia Lillis and Finn Wolfhard in the film. They were they were pretty well. Uh, the guy who played Bill was pretty good. Uh, I forget his name for some reason. Uh, the, the guy, the, the kid who plays um, uh, the fat guy. I can't think of his name for some reason. Um, damn it, why can't I think of his name? Uh, I related to a lot, not because I listen to, to New Kids on the Block, but because I am pretty fucking fat, and I, I have been picked on. I was picked on in school quite a bit for, for being a big fat boy, but uh, I've embraced my inner fatness, my inner fat guy, boys. People love the double chin. Um, but yeah, it, Chapter 1, I haven't talked about the movie at all, but it, it's it's a great film, much better, much better than the... Uh, uh, much better than the 1990 version, at least in my opinion. So uh, that's that's all I'm really gonna say about the movie. Uh, please check it out. It sucks that Guillermo didn't get to direct his version though, which apparently would have included the uh, that scene from the book. If you don't know what scene I'm talking to, I'm talking about. Bless your innocent little hearts. Uh, it chapter one, as long as as well as chapter two, because they're connected, obviously. Uh, check them out. Pretty good movie. Coming in at number 84 is Deadpool, and of course, because it's a comic book movie, I own it. Deadpool, sadly, this is the rental exclusive. It was not $13, thankfully, it was like $5 on clearance or something. I forget. If I actually did spend $13 on that, it's not a waste, but for a rental copy, probably is. Um, but, but yeah, Deadpool, it's, it's, uh, it's obviously a comic book movie. He's the most self-aware comic book character in history. He can't be killed. Um, it's a great, great film. If you love, like, self-aware humor, or you just love comic books, or you're just, you just want something that'll be fucking awesome, Deadpool is the movie to check out. I can't even say anything about the plot, just because, like, I want everyone to go into this movie as blind as possible. So, Deadpool... Please, please check it out as soon as you can. Coming in at number 83, it is Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, of course, this is the uh, MCU film that really showed, like, if you turn obscure villains or obscure heroes into the MCU, if you put them into the MCU, you will make big money and they will become instantly recognizable. Um, work more so f for this than with others. Captain Marvel! Um, but, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, from 2014, uh, it's a fantastic film, Chris Pratt is amazing in this, uh, Dave Batista, Batista is so funny in this, um, as with any Marvel movie, really, I can't really explain it, honestly, like, it's a great film, don't get me wrong, it's a great movie, I just really can't explain it for some reason. All I can say is just please go check it out after watching every other MCU film up to that point at least, please, because 
probably would work better if you see it. But uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, it's it's just a great, great movie. Um, yeah, this is really the section where I can't explain the movies I'm talking about for some reason. But Guardians of the Galaxy, please check it out. Coming in at number 82. Coming in at number 82 is A Christmas Story. This is from 1982. I'm pretty sure. It might be 83, but I'm pretty sure it's 82. Um, this is just an incredibly fun Christmas film. Of course, it is one that I do own on uh, DVD. This is a much better poster than this. I do not like this poster at all. It's the only one I could find. Uh, but yeah, A Christmas Story. Uh, funny thing, I think my parents spent $25 on this. Um, yeah. Um, not good. Uh, well, it's a good movie, but not good when you spend twenty five dollars on it. Um, it's it's basically a Christmas. It's a Christmas story. It's a family in nineteen forties Indiana. I think the back of the DVD said. Um, it stars Ralphie. Um, and it's pretty much just him trying to get until Christmas, asking for a Red Ryder BB gun. It's 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 a great well, it's a great movie. It's it's not one of my it's not my favorite Christmas film, uh, but it's definitely one of my favorites. So a Christmas story. Please, please check it out. Coming in at number 81 is Toy Story 2. This is from 1999. Uh, it's a sequel to Toy Story, obviously. Uh, Buzz and Woody, uh, they're trying to rescue uh, some toys, but it ends up going wrong. They end up getting taker, taken in by Al from Al, Al's Toy Barn, uh, where or Woody ends up getting taken. Uh, he ends up getting taken, and he needs to help the toys, or he needs to, to he needs to help get out. But he ends up meeting toys from technically his past, as he 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 re, he discovers what he originally was, uh, as in the TV show being all popular, and uh, it's it's a really good film. It's better than the first, uh, obviously infinitely better than the, the piece of shit third film. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother with the fourth one, uh, but Toy Story two. It's a pretty good movie. Um, that's really all I could say. Like I said, this is the section where I can't explain the movies too well. Because I'm actually recording this the next day after I recorded the, the first section. Um, but yeah, Toy Story 2. Check it out. Coming in at number 80 is Insomnia from 2002. This is a uh, an Al Pacino, Robin Williams, and Hilary Swank film. Uh, it's a Christopher Nolan film, so you know it's going to be really hard to, to explain it. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it, actually, is it's a Christopher Nolan film. It's got a fantastic performance by Al Pacino, an amazing performance by Robin Williams, who I'm warning, or who I'm just going to say now, another film of his from 2002, maybe two more of his films from 2002 are going to show up on this list. Uh, so yeah, Insomnia, check it out. Just, I don't even need to say anything about the plot or anything, but it's, 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 it's a great film. Just please check it out. Coming in at number 79 is The Hateful Eight from 2015. This is, I believe, the first appearance of Quentin Tarantino on the list. Um, I'm going to check my list as I, I explain. Uh, but basically, this is a... Uh, this is a... Uh, it's a movie. It takes place in... I forget exactly when it takes place, honestly. That's probably really bad. But um, but it's, it's a movie that uh, basically traps eight people into a into one little house and they're trying to figure out like a murder it's not a murder mystery but it's 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 very much a get to know each other while things are incredibly intense film uh it's nearly three hours which i think is the only thing that really holds it back from being out of the like top 75 or so um is it runs a little long in my opinion but uh believe me every minute is worth it um i i the irony in those two statements, but I, I would probably cut back about five or ten minutes, maybe fifteen at the most. Uh, it's an incredible cast. Really, everyone brings brings it all, brings it their all. Uh, Kurt Russell is completely badass in this film. Uh, Samuel Jackson's awesome, uh, and of course Bruce Dern. Who doesn't love Bruce Dern? Uh, but yeah, uh, Hateful Eight. Please, please check it out. It's a Tarantino film, so if you love the name Tarantino, just check it out, please. Coming in at number 78 is Split. This is from 2016. This is the sequel to Unbreakable. Um, yeah, it's it's to tie in the Unbreakable and Split universe together. Uh, technically, that would be Glass, actually. But uh, Split is an incredible movie. Uh, James McAvoy 
uh, puts on arguably his best performance in a film that I've ever seen personally. Um, this is coming from a guy who's only seen him in, in Split, the X-Men films he's been in, and I think nothing else. There's a few of his films I really want to see, though. Uh, I really like uh, James McAvoy. Um, but yeah, basically it's about uh, Kevin, his character, uh, who has uh, multiple personality disorder. As you can see on the poster, 23. Well, technically, technically 24 uh, multiple personalities. Um, well, technically 23 multiple personalities of his own counts as one, but whatever. Um, 24 personalities of his, and he ends up taking three girls hostage. Um, and basically just, it's them, for the most part, interacting with some of his his personality some of his his characters um and it's it's a really really good film it's got Haley Lou Richardson from a film that you're going to see later on in the countdown um yeah split honestly please check it out it's i can't even begin to explain how good this movie is it's it's not top 75 cuz i think I, I it's been a while since i've seen it i've only seen it once a lot of these movies i've only seen once um, but also because I can't remember it a whole too, too well. I do remember it quite a bit, but, um, but, but yeah, basically just please watch Split. It's a really, really, really good movie. I, it, just for James McAvoy. Plus it's an, it's an actually good M. Night Shyamalan film. So check it out. Coming in at number 77 is, Hey, look, it's unbreakable. The other good M. Night Shyamalan film. This probably should have been higher up, but I wanted to pair Split and Unbreakable together one for one just to be cute. Uh, oh. Oh, shit. I didn't... I forgot to show. I have Insomnia on DVD. Um, I forgot to show that for some reason. And for some reason, there's a movie that's not even on my countdown. That's... I know it might be. I doubt it, though. Uh, and I also do own Unbreakable. I do have the slip, by the way. It's just over there. It wouldn't fit on my little DVD rack if I put the slip on it. But, yeah. I do own uh, Unbreakable. Vista series collection, it's a very, very good version of the movie, a very, very good version of the DVD, uh, but yeah, Unbreakable, this is a very, very, very good movie, uh, it's technically a comic book movie, because it's sort of centered around comic book, comic books in a way, um, Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson give great performances in this, my, in my opinion, Bruce Willis actually acts <laughs> in this movie, as opposed to just being Bruce Willis, um, that's that's really all you can say is it's it's a great film i can't say it without spoiling the film i think uh so all i can say is check out unbreakable and then check out split please just please do it thank you very much coming in at number 76 is the goonies this is a 1985 film from steven spielberg probably his best in my opinion the, oh no 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 his second best because there's a movie later on in the countdown that i'm looking at now that's 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 a steven spielberg film this is just pure 80s fun, honestly. And of course, I own it on DVD. I've seen it twice now. No, three times, actually. I've seen it three times. Um, the Goonies is just a fantastic film. Please check it out. I recommend you check it out whenever you can. The Goonies is great 80s fun. Uh, Josh Brolin is in it. Uh, very surprising given... Given, given how he's well known today to be Thanos, obviously in the MCU, uh, it's great to see him in the Goonies back in 1985, 34 years ago. No, yeah, 34 years ago. Um, the Goonies, just please check it out. It's 80s fun, pretty much. Coming in at number 75 is The Polar Express. This is from 2004. This is one of those films that I've only seen once, but I remember it so vividly. I remember seeing it like it was yesterday or, or like it was 10 minutes ago uh this movie is one of those christmas films that i absolutely love um it's just a great christmas film it's about this kid uh on christmas eve uh he basically i believe he doesn't believe in santa i think i'm pretty sure uh <laughs> and uh basically tom hanks is his conductor and he brings the kid gets him on the polar express and brings him to see Santa at the North Pole. And it's everything that's going on on the train. It's it's a great film. And of course, of course, because I loved it so much, I had to get it on DVD. Polar Express on DVD. This is a fantastic film. Love the cover and love that they used it for the DVD as well. Uh, except obviously without the credits at the bottom. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I believe this was in 3D. I'm pretty sure it was in 3D. 
Um, but yeah, uh, the Polar Express, please, please check it out. That's all I can really say. Uh, it's, it's gets, it gets gets a little creepy at points, especially with some of the mocap that they have for the film. But uh, but yeah, Polar Express, it's a good, it's a great film. Please check it out. Coming in at number 74 is Monster House. This is a movie from 2006. It's another Steven Spielberg film, actually, apparently. Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg. I didn't realize that. Uh, of course, I love this movie enough that I had to get it on DVD. Uh, Monster House on DVD. Great, great film. Uh, absolutely love this movie. Uh, it's 74 because I have checked it out a little bit recently. And it's still a really, really good film. It's just that some of the CG can, doesn't hold up anymore. And I, th I think there's some moments where I'm like, yeah, this doesn't necessarily work. And then I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, it does it in this point. But uh, Monster House, it's a great film. It's about a monster house. These three kids are trying to, to stop it from terrorizing the neighborhood. Uh, that's really all I can say about the movie. It's, it's really, really fun. Check it out. Coming in at number 73 is Nocturnal Animals from 2016. This was knocked down a lot. It honestly would probably be top 50 if I... Uh, if there was one thing that did not piss me off about this movie, uh, but first I'll explain the plot. Basically, it's about Amy Adams' character. It's not even about her, actually. She's, uh, gone through a divorce with, uh, her, her now ex-husband, and he writes a book and sends it to her and wants her to read it, and as she starts to read it, we get teleported into the story of the book. So it's a story within a story. It's a book within a movie. Um, and technically it's about Jake Gyllenhaal's character, how his, his family gets, gets kidnapped one night, and he has to try and save them. Uh, it's an incredibly good movie. Uh, my only issue is the fucking jump scare that is in this movie. Uh, it's, it's honestly a literal screamer, in my opinion. It's, it's screamer territory. Uh, it's, it's, it's at a point in the film where you really don't expect it. I'm just gonna give you the context baby crib that's that's the context you're getting so when you when you see a baby crib in the film turn down those fucking speakers or skip to like a minute ahead because it really does it really helps um if they take out the jump scare which honestly i would i if i could i would make an edit of this film just take out that jump that jump scare boom clip it in boom that's that's the movie this probably is top 50 as well honestly i this is the section where movies that could have been top 50 aren't um but, uh, but Nocturnal Animals would have been, like, close to 50, probably in the 50s, or in the 40s, I would think. Not, if not for that fucking jump scare. That jump scare is literally the only thing holding me back from watching this movie again and putting it higher on the list. Uh, but Nocturnal Animals, aside from the jump scare, it's a great film. Jake Gyllenhaal, mwah, beauty. Amy Adams, mwah, beauty. Michael Shannon, fucking beauty. Um, it's, it's a great film. Nocturnal Animals. Please check it out. Coming in at number 72 is The Usual Suspects. Uh, this is a very, very interesting and not complex film, but it's a very interesting film. It's about these these five guys who um, who all get taken in for a murder. And uh, the detectives have to, come, have to figure out who committed the murder. And, uh, and, and yeah, pretty much it's, it's basically... Uh, it's, it's, it's the criminals more or less explaining their side. And at the end you get a twist and that's all I'm going to say about this film. Uh, all I'm going to say is, uh, everyone steals the show. Everyone steals the show when they come in. So yeah, uh, please, please check out the movie. Just please do it. It's a great film. Coming in at number 71 is Panic Room. This is a movie that stars Jodie Foster, Kirsten Dunst, Dwight Yoakam, uh, Jared Leto, and I believe Forrest Whitaker. Yes, Forrest Whitaker. Uh, this is a very, very good film. Sadly, it does not get talked about a lot. It's it's arguably, in my opinion, a hidden gem from 2002. And funny enough, I saw it because I have it on DVD. Uh, this is part of the Super Bite collection. Uh, yeah, uh, Panic Room. Honestly, when I bought it, I, well, I, I, my dad told me, oh, Dwight Yoakam's in that movie. I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be a decent film. It was much better than I expected, honestly. Panic Room is a great, great thriller. Uh, it's basically about Dwight Yoakam, Jared Leto, and Forrest Whitaker, who are uh, criminals who who break into this uh, break into Jodie Foster's house uh, while she's sleeping. She just moved in, and they uh, and basically they're trying to rob the place. 
for I think there's like a jewel in the house because her husband either died or no her husband is working late I'm pretty sure uh, and she's alone with Kirsten Stewart did I say Kirsten Dunst? Because I meant Kirsten Stewart. Or Kristen Stewart, not Kirsten. That's Kirsten Dunst. Uh, but Kristen, Chris, uh, Kristen Stewart, um, who's very, very young in this movie. I think she's like 10, actually, which is pretty good because she puts on a pretty good performance. Um, she peaked young. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, J uh, Jodie Foster takes her daughter into this panic room, and they basically have to try and uh, solicit some – not solicit, but they have to try and win this, like, battle – uh, this non-existent battle with the criminals and try to get them uh, to leave without taking anything. It's a really, really good film. Uh, Panic. That's all I'm going to say about it. Panic Room, please check it out. Pretty good film. Coming in at number 70 is Bumblebee. This is a movie from last year, 2018, or two years ago, 2018. Three years ago, 2018. Two, two, four years ago? Who knows? It's a movie from 2018. Um... I didn't realize I didn't even take an English poster. Ugh, uh, that's going to bug the shit out of me, I, I guarantee it. Uh, of course, the movie stars Haley Steinfeld, so that immediately bumps it up from where it would be. Has John Cena, bumps it up a little more from where it would be. Uh, and it's a good Transformers film, bumps it up from here to here. I'm not a big fan of Transformers. This movie is fantastic. I love this movie. It might be cliched to all hell. I don't see it personally. I love this movie. Uh, I've only seen it once, uh, so loving it the first time might be a little different from loving it the second time, sort of like your girlfriend. <laughs> the fuck am I talking about? Uh, but Bumblebee, uh, Haley Steinfeld is awesome in this movie. She's she's the reason it's on this list, is because it's Haley Steinfeld. Um, she plays uh, Charlie Watson, I believe her character's name is, uh, who discovers Bumblebee. It takes place in the 80s, so it's not like a current Transformers film, it's from back in 83, I think, 83 or 84 is when this uh, takes place. Uh, it's a really, really good film. Bumblebee is so fucking cute in this film, uh, which I know looking at him here, it's like, that's cute, but stuff he does in the film, he's cute. Bumblebee, please check it out. Coming in at number 69 is the Jackass Trilogy. This is, uh, of course, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I do have uh, all three of them on DVD, which I will... Bring out even 2.5 I'll show off. So, Jackass the movie. Uh, number 2, 2.5, and 3. Sadly, I don't have 3.5 just yet, but I hope to change that whenever it's possible. Uh, I have the poster for 3 up there just because uh, because I love uh, the third. It was the first one I saw, and it might be my favorite. I'm not 100% sure yet, but... Um, and actually, I believe, because it was actually labeled Jackass. Yeah, I do still have them. I still have the uh, 3D glasses, which I will on for you in just a second but basically this is just a bunch of guys um johnny knoxville steve-o kevin dunn uh preston lacy and uh a bunch of others this is giving me a headache already i'm gonna take them off in a minute uh but they basically do stunts they they're, they're doing stunts they're pranking each other great films it's not like current day pranksters it's an actually good prank film and the pranks are actually real uh so yeah jackass the trilogy uh, if you like a little bit of gross out humor, you love watching people get hurt, uh, trick, uh, basically hurt themselves, uh, check them out. If you don't, don't. Uh, it's my type of thing, personally. I love Jackass. Uh, so, yeah. And, of course, it's in at number 69. Nice. Check them out. Coming in at number 68 is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And, of course, this is one I have on DVD, but I was an idiot, and, uh, and I, I cut into the cardboard case which of course means now that the scene selection is no more um yes i was an idiot when i was a little baby boy uh but yeah willy wonka and the chocolate factory it's just an incredibly fun kids film it's about uh these five kids well it's really about charlie um but these five kids win golden tickets to you know i don't even need to explain it you know the plot of willy wonka if you have not seen it somehow please check it out willy wonka and the chocolate factory is a fantastic film just do yourself a favor and watch this movie if you want pure joy. Coming in at number 67. Wow. Hey, look. It's a good Thor movie. Uh, Thor Ragnarok comes in at number 67. This is a movie from 2018. Um, it's a really, really good film. Honestly, I love this film. Uh, it's probably it's definitely one of my favorite um, MCU films. One of the last good ones as well. Uh, um yeah, a Thor. It's the third Thor film. It, I can't say too much without revealing plot points of the other MCU films. So all I'm going to say is 
check out every other MCU film and then check Thor Ragnarok out because you're going to love it. It's a great film. Please do yourself a favor. Check this one out. Coming in at number 66 is Brokeback Mountain. This is from 2005 starring Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, this is a fantastic film, honestly. I remember, no, I, I don't remember, but uh, I do remember hearing some jokes when it came out the, about the That Gay Cowboy movie. And honestly, it's it's much, much better than that. Honestly, it's, it's a very, very beautiful film in some regards because they're not outwardly gay. Uh, which is the interesting point because you can make up your mind on if they are gay and they're just uh, they're just not ready to confront that, or if they're bisexual. Um, and uh, but either way, honestly, it's a great film. It's it's a good character study in my opinion. If if you want to do that on the on Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger's characters, but e either way, this is a fantastic film. It's really beautiful in some points, and of course, I saw it because. I have it on DVD. Uh, this was a dollar twenty-five, as with a lot of movies from, from, from when I buy them. Uh, but yeah, Brokeback Mountain. It's a fantastic film. Please check it out. Coming in at number sixty-five is A Nightmare on Elm Street. This is from nineteen eighty-five. Uh, coming in at number sixty-five. Uh, and of course, I saw this one. This is the section where I've seen it because I own it on DVD. This is the two-disc, uh, I guess, collector's edition. This is the Infinifilm New Line Collection. Um, funny thing, I got this before I knew horror movies were pretty rare to get on DVD. Um, or some were. Some were. Um, but Nightmare on Elm Street, it's a great film. It's a really great horror film. One of my favorites. Uh, this might actually be my favorite pure horror film. Because I know I have some horror films that are horror comedy. I uh, know there's one. There's technically one. But no, this is the highest one. The, the one I was thinking of is a thriller, more or less. Uh, but yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, it's... You go to sleep, Freddy Krueger comes and kills you. Great film. Just ignore all the sequels, because I've ignored them for now. Check out the original. It's a great film. Thank you. Coming in at number 64 is Oh Brother Where Art Thou. This is a Coen Brothers film, so that should give you an inkling why I like it. It's got George Clooney, which explains why I like it. Uh, John, Tutu John Totoro, which explains why I like it. Uh, Tim, Tim Blake Nelson, who's pretty good in this film. And John Goodman, which should explain why I watched it. Uh, of course, this is another one that I did not spend two dollars on, but it was a dollar. I'm pretty sure. Uh, bought this. It's a really, really, really good film. It's about these uh, three criminals who break out of jail. Tech, well, not jail, but it's their their holding mates. Um, and basically, George Clooney is le leading them under the impression that there's gold where he wants to go uh, to get back to to his wife. Um, or is now ex-wife, and it's 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 a really great film. Uh, one of the few I think religious films that I like because it's not outwardly religious. It just has hints of religion for the most part. Uh, of course, this introduced me to the amazing song that is "Man of Constant Sorrow," which, of course, if you saw the top country songs list, you would know that it's it's on there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's really all I can say is just uh, aside from that, if you love good bluegrass country folk music, check it out. Uh, if you love good acting, check it out. If you love Coen Brothers, check it out. It's it's a great film any way you want to look at it, in my opinion. Coming in at number 63 is Seven. This is from 1995. I could have put this at 67 or number 7 overall, but I didn't want to be cute. So here it is at number 63. Probably a little too low, in my opinion, now that I look back at it. But I'm recording the list now. There's no point in editing it now. I can just do that for next year. Uh, of course, this is one I own on DVD. Uh, absolutely amazing list in my opinion, or absolutely amazing movie. Um, of course, it's about the seven deadly sins. There's a killer who's killing uh, one person for every uh, deadly sin. So gluttony, greed, sloth, envy, wrath, pride, and lust. Um, honestly, it's just an incredible movie. Brad Pitt, Morgan, uh, Morgan Freeman, absolutely amazing in this film. Uh, I'm not going to spoil who the killer is in case anyone doesn't know who it is. But whoever plays the killer, wink, wink, not judge, because obviously I know, uh, they do a fantastic job. Probably their best performance in a movie I've ever seen personally. Um, seven. Uh, there is of course a uh, there is of course a, uh, a a jump scare in the film, uh, but it works better in this film than Nocturnal Animals because you don't expect it, you don't see it coming while it's right in front of you, pretty much. So yeah, that's great. And honestly, there's one death in this film that oh my. Fucking guy, I just got chills thinking of it because it's 
It's it's fucking brutal, honestly. You don't see it, thankfully, or at least I'm pretty sure you don't. Unless there's an extended cut and you do, which... Uh, but that death is just fucking brutal. Uh, so check out, check out Seven. It's a great film. I love it. Please do yourself a favor. Watch this fantastic film. Coming in at number 10 is Inception. This is from 2010, of course. It's an all-star cast. Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Ellen Page, Tom Hardy, uh, Michael Caine, a, a lot of others that I can't remember right now. Uh, and, of course, this is one that I did get on DVD. Pretty much the same cover, actually, now that, now that I look at it. Just everyone's brought closer together. Um, but, yeah, Inception. I watched this because I bought it on DVD. This is really the I bought it because I, I watched it because I bought it uh, collection. Um, but yeah, Inception, fantastic film, uh, I can't say anything, it's a Christopher Nolan film, that's all I can say about it without mind-fucking myself. Uh, so Inception, check it out, it's very complicated though, but check it out. Coming in at number 61 is Catch Me If You Can from 2002, this is a great Steven Spielberg film, I have quite a bit of Steven Spielberg's actually, uh, Steven Spielberg films on here. Of course, this is one I bought on DVD after I watched it, actually. Revolutionary. <laughs> um, uh, revolutionizing the fucking DVD genre. Uh, but yeah, Catch Me If You Can is the two-disc edition. Uh, very, very, very big fan of this film. It was actually my favorite film when I first saw it. But after a while, I was like, okay, it's not my favorite. But it's still pretty good. It's a really good film. It's about uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, who whose character fakes being a, a, flight, uh, a, a pilot, a FBI, uh, no. Uh, a, a pilot, a lawyer, and a doctor, um, before his 21st birthday, which is, this is based on a real story, which blows my mind. Uh, it's about him faking his way, uh, to millions of dollars, pretty much. Uh, his dad's Christopher Walken in this film, which is, mwah, perfect casting. And Tom Hanks is an FBI agent who's going after him. Great film. Please check it out. Uh, honestly, one of the best Steven Spielberg films and I think if I watch it again, it'd probably be top top 30, maybe. 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 I highly doubt it, but maybe. Great film. Please check it out. Coming in at number 60 is Throw Mama from the Train. This is from 1982, starring Danny DeVito, Billy Crystal, and the one from The Goonies, who I can't remember the name of, The Old Woman. This is a hilarious film, in my opinion. This is absolutely one of the funniest films I've ever seen. Um, Billy Crystal's best, in my opinion. Danny DeVito's best, I think? I, oh no, his second best, I want to say, because he there's a movie with him later in the countdown. Maybe his second, maybe his third best, because there might be another another film, but not sure. Uh, Throw Mama from the Train is basically about Billy Crystal. Or uh, uh, Billy Crystal, he's in a class with uh, Danny DeVito, I think, and they're both writers. And uh, basically, Danny DeVito stalks Billy Crystal, and he asks him for a favor. Uh, and that's to get on a train with him and throw his mama from the train. <laughs> uh, it's a fa it's a really funny movie. I'm not gonna say anything else other than that. Uh, please check it out if you love good comedy. It's a very, it's kind of dark at some points, but for 1982, it's it's very rev it's very shocking for 1982. I would like to think. Uh, th throw mama from the train. Please check it out. Coming in at number 59 is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and of course, this is one that I watched because I bought it. I've heard good things about it, but I watched it because I bought it. Uh, it's a Blu-ray, DVD, digital, yeah. Uh, well, actually, it's a Blu-ray and DVD because the digital code isn't in here because they were cheap fucks when I bought this movie. Uh, fantastic film, Franz McDormand, uh, Woody, Woody Harrelson, I almost said Woody Nelson for some reason. Woody Nelson would be a great name for someone. Uh, Sam Rockwell, Peter Dinklage is also in this. He's great in this film. Everyone's great in this film. Uh, uh, I'm, it's, uh, I'm gonna say the plot, which is gonna get me demonetized once I eventually get monetized, which for f pretty much is probably gonna be a four-hour video. Um, that's gonna hurt my ad revenue. Um, like anyone's gonna be watching this in like three years when I finally get monetized. Uh, but it's basically about Franz McDormand. Her, her character's a mother, uh, or technically a widowed mother or widowed yeah she's a mother who loses her daughter uh she gets uh raped and murdered in 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 the night and basically after i believe it's six months six months or a year i think it's a year actually uh she as she tries to get the police's attention setting up these three billboards um it's based on a true story i believe as well i think i'm not 100 percent sure but i think it might be i'm gonna check the dvd real quick see if it is I think it, I think it's loosely based off a true story, actually. I think, now that I think about it. 
Um, but basically, he uh, she sets up these three, three billboards, and it gets the police's attention. And yeah, it's uh, they tr try and track down the murderer. It's it's a really really good film. It's a great great film. Uh, Woody Harrelson puts on a really good performance. So is Franz McDormand. It might be her best performance in my opinion. Uh, three billboards outside. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Please give it a. Coming in at number fifty eight is Primal Fear from nineteen ninety six, and this is one that. I bought because I watched it. Um, this is the Hard Evidence Edition from, I believe, 2017. Yeah, 2017, so two, technically three years ago. Uh, this is the version. Uh, this is a movie with Richard Gere and Edward Norton. Edward Norton with his feature film debut. Honestly, he was a he was fantastic from day one, in my opinion. This is another movie, Frances McDormand. Actually, she's also in this one. I was looking at the cast and I was like, oh yeah, Frances McDormand is in this. I can't I can't forget to mention her. Um, this is a fantastic film. It's Richard Gere. He plays a lawyer. Um, he, he plays a lawyer and he basically is hired to represent, uh, Edward Norton's character who is getting accused of, uh, murdering, I believe it's a, a priest, a priest or a father of, uh, of a church. And, uh, Richard Gere has to prove that he's innocent. Uh, but meanwhile, Edward Norton's character has two personalities. And so he also has to figure out if it could have been the alternate personality that killed the the, the church goer or the church member, because uh, I'm not sure if it's a father or a priest. I'm just gonna to say a church member. Uh, has to figure out if it was the other personality of his. Um, and it's it's a really really good film. It's rated R, which I didn't even realize it was rated R. Uh, I can see why it's rated R because I think they say the word cunt a few times. So, yeah. <laughs> But um, but Primal Fear, it's a great film. Probably Richard Gere's best film, because I think it's the only one I've seen of his. Uh, but yeah, Primal Fear, please check it out. It's a really, really good film. Coming in at number 57 is A Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. And this is one instance where I bought it because I watched it. Uh, Nightcrawler is a fantastic film. Uh, it's Jake Gyllenhaal also has Rene Russo and, uh, oh god, what's his name? Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton's also in it. Yeah, Bill Paxton. Uh, it basically stars Jake Gyllenhaal. He's the uh, he's this guy who has nothing going on in his life until he comes across basically a nightcrawler. He a uh, nightcrawler who basically is uh, for those who don't know is, is a I don't know if they still do this. I'm pretty sure they still do. I haven't watched the news recently though. Uh, is a person who works for a TV uh, station or a news station who drives around to. Uh, crime scenes and gets footage for news stations uh, and Jalen Hall runs into one of them I believe it's Bill Paxton's character loves what they're doing and becomes one himself and he eventually becomes so immersed in the 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 life of being a nightcrawler that it, it eventually overcomes it overtakes him pretty much uh, it's one of those films where it's a really fantastic film but it's driven by Jake Jalen Hall's performance it's a good film without him if you put uh Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is actually a bad example because he probably would have made the role better. Uh, but if you put, say, Will Smith in the role, it's reduced from a really, really good film to probably a decent film. But it's still a good film. Uh, but Jake Gyllenhaal really gives this film that extra boost it needs. Gyllenhaal is fantastic in this movie, honestly. He is just... He's, he's great in this film. Nightcrawler, please check it out. Coming in at number 56 is Death to Smoochie. This is the film starring this is a film starring Robin Williams, Edward Norton, and Danny DeVito, which of course I bought because I watched, and I was so happy to find this on DVD. Funny thing, actually, now that I mention it for Nightcrawler, uh, I found this like a week after I watched it, which is super lucky. This I found like a month after I watched it, or a few months after. It was two dollars at a pawn shop, which is a great, great deal. Um, but Death to Smoochie, it's about uh, it's it's about Robin Williams who plays, I believe, what's his character's name? Randolph the... Rudolph the Randolph? Randolph the Rudolph or something? He's Randolph. Uh, and he... He's end up, he he's getting... Uh, he gets caught for uh, money laundering. He basically uh, puts kids on his show based on how much their parents pay uh, Randolph, which is hilarious. Um, so he gets replaced with Edward Norton, who plays Smoochie the... Ran Smoochie, uh, Smoochie the, the Rhino. And he's pure innocence he he loves the kids he's doing it for the kids he wants to entertain kids that's his whole purpose in life pretty much uh and robin williams does not like it all he, he tries to put an end uh, in various ways to smoochie it's a hilarious film 
It's an unexpected hit. It technically is because it failed at the box office. It's a really dark comedy. It's arguably a black comedy on some standards, but I, I would say it's it's more or less a dark comedy. It doesn't quite reach black comedy standards just yet. Or not standards, but it doesn't reach black comedy. It's dark comedy. Um, but, yeah, and Danny DeVito's also in it. It's, it's a great film. Death to Smoochie. You're, if you love dark comedy, you're going to love this one. Check it out. Coming in at number 55 is 12 Monkeys. This is a fantastic film that, of course, I bought because I watched it. We're getting into that section now where I watched these because I bought them. Um, yeah, 12 Monkeys. Uh, it's a Terry Gilliam film. I He made another film that I've seen. For the life of me, I can't remember, and it's going to piss me off. Terry Gilliam. I'm going to remember it when it comes up in the countdown because I'm pretty sure it's in the countdown. Uh, but stars Bruce Willis, who actually acts for once and isn't Bruce Willis. Uh, Madeline Stowe, who plays a therapist in the film. And Brad Pitt, who's a psych ward uh, patient. Bra Bruce Willis basically is hired. Uh, it's basically set in the future. I think it's set in 2042? I think? I can't remember. I, I know it's set like way in the future, I think. Or not way in the future. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, for some reason. But he sent in, he sent into the past to stop the army of the twelve monkeys from spreading this disease, and um and and basically causing the apocalypse. The future is history. Pretty much to make to stop the future from being history, um which I love that I love that line honestly. Um and basically Brad, Bruce Willis is trying to stop Brad Pitt from starting the army of the twelve monkeys. And yeah, it's it's a great film. Um, it, there's a big twist in there, which is really fucking sad, honestly. When you when you think about it, when I think about it. Uh, but yeah, Twelve Monkeys. If you love time travel films, you're gonna love this. Please check it out. Coming up next, at number fifty four is Bubba Hotep from two thousand two, and this is one instance. Is in, and I watched it because I bought it, or another one, I should say. Uh, this is a hilarious film. One of the funniest comedies I've seen personally. Uh, it stars Bruce uh, Bruce Campbell as Elvis Presley, uh, Ozzie Davis as JFK, and a mummy who sucks the souls out of people's assholes. And it's up to Elvis and JFK to stop the mummy from killing everyone in, in the retirement home that they're in. It's a bizarre plot, but it is fucking hilarious. Please, I, I'm just going to stop there. Mummy who sucks souls out of people's assholes. That's all you need to know to probably be intrigued. Check out Bubba Hotep. It's from 2002. A lot of films from 2002 now that I notice it. Please check Bubba Hotep out. Great film. Coming up next at number 53 is Maniac. This is a film from, uh, this is a film starring Elijah Wood. That, of course, I watched it because I bought it. <laughs> um, the slipcase is over there, by the way. But yeah, uh, uh, uh Maniac. Uh, it stars uh, Elijah Wood, and there's actually a lot of, of footage or a lot of scenes in the film, like the poster where it's POV in Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood's POV, which I love when movies do that. It's a very, very slow, not slow moving, but it's a realistic film in some aspects where it's Elijah Wood, he basically has a fetish uh, for scalps. He, he, every girl he meets romantically, uh, he, he has to cut off their scalp. Uh, he meets one girl early, early on and he tries to resist and they show how much he tries, he's trying to resist, but eventually he can't. Uh, and basically he meets this girl played by Nora, uh, Arzing, Arzinger. I, I butchered her name. My apologies. If for some reason she watches this video and some, for some reason is this far into the video, which if you're this far into one of my videos, you're a trooper. Thank you very much. You deserve a fucking medal. <laughs> um, uh, and basically Elijah Wood is friends with her and he is trying to suppress his fetish for scalps throughout the whole movie. Uh, and it's it's probably like, oh, okay, that's it. But no, it's a fantastic film. It's, it's, there's th the effects when he cuts scalps or when he cuts on the other body part, because he does do that, is so realistic. Honestly, it, Tom Savini, eat your heart out with this film. I love Tom Savini, and I mean no disrespect to the special effects legend himself, but for this film, eat your heart out, Tom Savini, because holy fuck. Fuck, they, it looks real. And honestly, just please check this movie out. It's a great it's a great thriller. I was going to say horror film, but it's, it's recognized as a horror classic, which I would say it is because technically it's a remake of a horror film, Maniac from 1980. This is one instance where the remake is probably better than the original. Check Maniac out. It's a great film. 
And for Maniac, to meet the Robinsons coming in at number 52 from 2007. This is a movie that, uh, another one that I bought it because I, or I watched it because I bought it. Or my, actually, I didn't buy it. My grandparents bought this one for me from, uh, for, I want to say it was my sixth birthday. Uh, they went out, they found, I guess, this, and they were like, oh, okay, let's, let's get this for him. And, uh, I gotta say, thank you, Ma, and, 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 and Bubba John. If for some reason you guys were ever watching, or if Bubba John's ever watching this, rest in peace, Grandma. Uh, rest in peace, Ma. Great, great person in my life. Um, but Meet the Robinsons, great, great film. Uh, it's very, very funny. I saw it recently for the first time in about ten years, I want to say. Not ten years, like five or six years. And it still holds up, in my opinion. It's about Lewis... Uh, who's this kid? And he's get he gets taken to the future. Um, uh, he's he's like a scientist. It's basically like uh, Claudio Bachanza Meatballs, in which the main character is a scientist. Flint, I just remembered his name actually, because I watched the movie last night after I just did part of the countdown. Flint, not Finn, so I was close. Flint. Uh, but basically, Lewis here is sent to the future um, to uh, to repair something. Cause he's he's a he's a scientist. He's a kid. He 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 he's working on whatever they need to be fixed, uh, but he can't do it. And eventually, hijinks ensues. Uh, it's a great film. Uh, honestly, it's it's a really really funny film. Uh, great kids film. Probably one of the best messages in a Disney film I've ever seen. One of the only good Disney films I've ever seen. Meet the Robinsons. Please check it out. Love this movie. Coming in at number 51 is Rounders, starring Matt Damon and Edward Norton, uh, with John Turturello uh, and John Malkovich and Martin Landau uh, in supporting roles. Uh, this is one that I actually bought because I watched it. Rounders on DVD. I uh, love the cover. Funny thing, I actually had that on my, my list for a while, and then I found it myself at a pawn shop, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, let's get it. And funny thing, it actually came with The Happening and The Hangover as well for some reason. So, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, Matt Damon and Edward Norton. I think this is the only poker film I've ever seen and that's ever been made. Or not ever made. But it's definitely the best poker movie in my opinion. Um, Rounders is uh, it's about Matt Damon and Edward Norton. Edward Norton basically uh, just gets released from, from jail. Uh, I believe for doing something poker related. And they want to get right back into the game. Matt Damon wants to be a... Wants to get into the, the World Series of Poker, I think. And him and Edward Norton are, are not are able to, but they they want to try to, and they basically try hustling around the the not well, I guess Las Vegas uh, card scene. It's a fantastic movie. Just please check it out. I probably just butchered the plot. Check it out for yourself. Rounders, great film. Coming in at number fifty as we're halfway through the countdown now. Oh my God, The People vs Larry Flynn from 1996. This is a film starring Woody Harrelson, uh, Courtney Love, and Edward Norton. That of course. I bought it because I watched it. This is a film that I absolutely loved when I first saw it. And I was super happy to get it on DVD, as I still am. Because I'm very surprised I was able to find that. It's almost like someone at the pawn shop knows me and is tracking my history. Like, okay, this guy loves this movie. Let's buy it and put it here for him. Because, like, that's happened twice. Or that happened the uh, People vs. Larry Flint, Rounders, uh, Nightcrawler. Like, who would have thought... To put, bring this in to a pawn shop. But my, 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 my theorizing over the world conspir conspiring to get me to buy every film that I love. Which is actually a pretty good conspiracy if that's the case. I, I would love that. <laughs> no, but, but, um, but this movie, it focuses on Larry Flint. It's a real story, obviously. Um, it stars Woody Harrelson as Larry Flint as he creates, what's it called? He basically creates a f Hustler, Hustler Magazine, um, as he creates Hustler Magazine, and I believe is the first ever um, magazine to feature fully nude models, I think. I'm pretty sure Playboy didn't do it first. I'm pretty sure it was a Hustler, uh, and basically he gets sued a ton of times. Edward Norton becomes his lawyer. Courtney Love is his, is his wife in this movie. Uh, it's a great film. It's very funny at some points. Uh, it's a Miles Foreman film. Um, and it's, it's a great movie. Just please check it out. And, uh, if you're like Tarantino and you hate biopics, I think you would like this one. People vs. Larry Flint, please check it out. Coming in at 49 is a Pulp Fiction. This is from 1994. This is, uh, Tarantino's, uh, Tarantino's second film ever after Reservoir Dogs. Um, this is a really good film. A lot of people say this is Tarantino's best. For me personally, it's not. You will see the best film, obviously, on this list. 
Uh, it's an all-star cast. John Travolta, Samuel Jackson, Uma Thurman, Hera, Harvey Kinkle, uh, Tim Roth, Amanda Plummer, Vig Rhymes, uh, Rosanna Arquette, Christopher Walken, and Bruce Willis. Fantastic cast right there. Uh, Uma Thurman probably looking, in my opinion, the best she's ever looked. Uh, even more than Kill Bill. Love Kill Bill, Uma Thurman, the jumpsuit, but Uma Thurman looks great in this film. Uh, as does everyone. Everyone looks amazing in this film. Uh, honestly, it's, it's like I said, it's one of Tarantino's best. Uh, Tarantino himself is obviously in this film, as he was in a lot of his earlier films. Uh, it's a great film. I'm not even going to begin to explain the plot. Just check it out for yourself. Pulp Fiction, great film. Coming in at number 48 is There Will Be Blood from 2007. This is a movie that I watched it because I bought it. This is a Daniel Day-Lewis film. A fantastic, fantastic movie from Paul, Dos from Paul Thomas Anderson. You're going to be seeing quite a bit of him now that we're in the top 50. I love Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, yeah, it's basically about Daniel Day-Lewis, who is very selective about his roles, I want to mention. So the fact he took this up means it's going to be good. Uh, basically, he plays this guy, I believe it's in the 1920s, I think? Or 20... Yeah, it doesn't say, or at least it doesn't say on the back of the DVD that I noticed. Uh, but I believe it's 1920s, 1910s or 20s. I want, I'm going to say 20s. Um, who basically... Um, if I can read right off the back, uh, I think they're, ch oh, okay, so he's an independent oil man with his, with his group, uh, but he, his, basically his business is threatened by, uh, a preacher, a young, a, a young preacher of sorts, and he has to try and one-up his, his game. It's a really, really good film. It, it's not even really about that, I wouldn't say. It's really about his character, more or less, so, There Will Be Blood, uh, please check it out. Great film. Love it. Coming in at number 47 is Jackie Brown from 1997. That's right. I like Jackie Brown more than Pulp Fiction. Um, and, of course, this is one, as you should get known by now, I bought it because I watched it. Uh, or at least I'm pretty sure. No, I, I watched it because I bought it. Uh, Jackie Brown, I do have the slip. It's over there. Uh, but, yeah, Jackie Brown, great, great film. Uh, All-star cast, in my opinion. Uh, uh, Pam Greer, Samuel Jackson, Robert Foster, Bridget Fonda. Uh, Michael Keaton, Robert De Niro. It's an absolutely fantastic cast, in my opinion. Uh, honestly, I'm going to say it. Robert De Niro does not look better than in this film. I love the mustache he has. He has the Lemmy, as I like to call it. He has the Lemmy mustache. Um, or the Triple H, as, as, as wrestling fans would probably call it. Uh, and, of course, I had to use this poster. This Christmas Santa's got a brand new bag. I had to use this poster. Uh, it's a fantastic film. It's about Pam Greer, who... Um, I, I'm just gonna, I'm not even going to say the plot, actually. It's a Tarantino film. I don't explain the plot. Check it out. It's fucking Tarantino. That's all I'm going to say. Check it out. Coming in at number 46 is Logan. This is the third and final attempt at a Wolverine film that, of course, I bought on DVD. Rental exclusive because the place I bought it from only sells rentals for some reason, I guess. Uh, it's, it's a film that, of course, stars uh, Hugh Jackman as the Wolverine. Uh, and I'm going to say it because you probably heard uh but sadly uh hugh jackman's final outing as wolverine and i'm just gonna say it he ends this one on a fucking bang uh honestly this is the best x-men film uh and this is this is honestly the best hugh jackman film that i've seen unless there's one that he's in that i forgot about later in the list uh but this one is fantastic the ending honestly i think this is the only movie where the ending, every time I've seen it, which is twice thus far, has made me cry like fucking crazy. I'm not going to say what it is because it, it would be a big spoiler. Uh, but the ending of this film, if you've seen this film and you know the ending. Uh, my apologies, Logan. I did not mean to, to drop you on the floor. Uh, but yeah, if you know the ending to this movie, um, you, you know why I cried, honestly. Uh, the rest of this film is fantastic. Every minute of it is amazing. It doesn't really feel like a comic book movie, honestly, which is a great thing. It, it's sort of like a Joker. It's it's like Joker. Um, she'll put that on the list. Uh, it's it's like Joker, where it doesn't feel like a comic book movie. It feels more like a real film, uh, that's just simply loosely based on a comic book character. And honestly, that's really what Logan is. Logan is just a fantastic film. Please check it out. Coming in at number 45 is Moneyball. This is a fantastic film from 2011 starring Brad Pitt, Jonah Hill, and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Also with... Oh, you're not going to say. Okay, then. Screw you, then. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a fantastic film. 
Uh, it's based off of the Oakland A's, I want to say 2002-2003 season, or 2001-02, I think 2002-03 season. Uh, Brad Pitt plays their coach or some some type of management position, and basically the Oakland, the Oakland A's are the, the worst team in the league at that point, I believe, and they have the least money out of any, uh, any N- 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 MLB team, any baseball team. And they have to try and make find what works. Joan Hill plays a statistics guy who's hired by Brad Pitt to get players based off of their statistics. Very underrated, unknown players. They come in and Brad uh, Brad Pitt tries to make it work. It's a fantastic film. Uh, that's really all I can say about the film without you checking it out for yourself. Moneyball, great film. Coming in at number 44 is The Big Lebowski from 1998. Jeff Bridges, John Goodman, Julianne Moore, Steve Buscemi, and John Turturro. Uh, this is a Coen Brothers film, so that should probably give you a reason as to why I love it. Uh, of course I had to buy it on DVD. It was $2 at a pawn shop. Sadly, not the edition I wanted. I did want the edition with, uh, all three of them on the cover, but I mean, hey, still a pretty cool cover. That's two DVDs in a row I've dropped, and I'm gonna keep dropping them from now on, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is one that I watched, that I bought because I watched it, actually. Logan is one that I watched because I bought it, and, uh, yeah, um... Big Lebowski is just an awesome film. It's about the dude, obviously, played by Jeff Bridges. Uh, his carpet gets stolen. He gets mistaken for another Lebowski, Jeffrey Lebowski, uh, who I want to say is played by a guy who's in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I can't find his name, uh, I think. Um, and th- it's just some intertwining plots. There's a bowling tournament he's trying to get into. It's a fantastic film. Please just check it out whenever you can. Uh, it- it's... It's the dude, man. You, you gotta watch it, man. You, you gotta watch it. Coming in at 43 is uh, Taxi Driver from 1976 starring Robert De Niro, uh, Jodie Foster, Harvey Kinkle. Um, and, yeah, it's... it's This movie is one of the best character, st- character studies I've personally ever seen. Honestly, uh, analyzing the main character, I, I haven't even done it, honestly. Just because I'm like, this is that's gonna get pretty disturbing, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but honestly, this movie is absolutely amazing um, to see the, the the decline of someone like Robert De Niro's character who I can't even describe this film honestly. it's it's a great film. Um, very little action, very little action. It's more of a character study like I said and more of a, a talking film. but taxi driver, please check it out. phenomenal film. absolutely great. Coming in at number 42 is Don John from 2013. This is a film written, directed, and starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, Scarlett Johansson and Julianne Moore are also in this film. And, of course, this is one that I watched it because I bought it, baby. I fucking love Don John, man. Honestly, like, I bought the DVD, and then I found the Blu-ray, and I was like, get out of here, Blu-ray, a DVD. I'm going to get you with a Blu-ray. Um, and apparently there was also... Oh, no, there was not. Huh, I thought there was digital. There wasn't. But, yeah, Don John... This is an absolutely amazing film. It's incredibly funny. Uh, basically, stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt as as Don as John. Uh, they call him, uh, his friends call him Don John because he can get any woman he wants uh, whenever they go out to the club, to the bar, or whatever. Um, and basically, he finds one woman, uh, Barbara Sugarman, played by Scarlett Johansson, who play who's phenomenal in this film. Both her and Joseph Gordon-Levitt are amazing. They have great chemistry together. Um, and basically he has a hard time getting her, but eventually he does. He stalks her, finds her Facebook or asks, he doesn't even really stalk her. He just asks around for her, uh, pretty much. And, uh, they get together and it's, it's a great film. And at the afterwards and after a while, she wants him to get into college or go back to college, get a job while he goes to college where he meets Julianne Moore's character. Who's great. Honestly, probably the most relatable in this film. As much as I would love to relate to John in this film, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Give me a couple years. Give me a couple years and then I may- maybe, maybe, hopefully. God, I really hope so. Um, but, but, but meets Julian Moore's character. They start to bond. It's a great film, honestly. It's probably a little cliched in what you can see coming after a couple times watching it, but it's a great film. It also has... Uh, uh, Tony Danza, Brie Larson, and her only good movie. The only, or actually, no, the second only good movie next to Avengers Endgame, which is not on the list. What do you think? I'm a fucking schmuck? <laughs> no, no, but really. Anyone who has Endgame in their top 100 favorite films, I'm not calling you a schmuck. I'm saying, um, it's a joke. 
No, I'm so I'm I'm back at zero subs. Let's 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 start all over again. Make Harry great again. 2020. But yeah, Don John, fantastic film, one of my favorites. Check it out. Coming in at number 41 is Adaptation from 2002. This is a movie directed by uh, Scott uh, Spike Jones, screenplay by Charlie and Donald Kaufman. Wink, wink. Uh, starring Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep, and Chris Cooper. This is a Meryl Streep film that I actually like. Uh, Nicolas Cage gives, honestly, his best performance, in my opinion, ever in this film. Um, he plays Nick. Uh, he, he, he arguably does play Nicolas Cage, but he plays uh, Charlie and Donald Kaufman. He, he's in a dual role this time, um, he, and he, as he's basically trying to ad adapt this novel by Meryl Streep or played by Meryl Streep's character uh, into a film, uh, and he's trying to go about doing it in different ways. And it, it's basically the struggles of him of him as a screenwriter trying to adapt to this novel it's a great great film in my opinion it's 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 really it's a simple plot for the most part or it, when, when you explain it it's a simple plot but it's 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 a spike jones film so it's never really that simple um it's a great film uh i love that when it won uh best screenplay they gave charlie kaufman two awards even though don uh for 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 donald because he couldn't be there um but yeah uh um i almost said even though donald couldn't be there for some reason and Despite Donald couldn't be there. I just got a notification for something called Adult Xmas, so I'm gonna check that out. No, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna close that. Um, so yeah, uh, adaptation check it out Coming in at number 40 is Shaun of the Dead This is a romantic comedy with zombies as it pretty much says it's a rom it's a it's a romantic horror comedy Which of course I bought it because I watched it. This is a fantastic film This is actually the second copy I've owned the first one I gave out I loaned to someone they never fucking gave it back, so, yeah, fuck them. Uh, but, yeah, Shaun of the Dead, a fantastic film. It's an Edgar Wright film, so you know it's going to be great. Uh, it stars Simon Pegg, so you know it's going to be great. It's also got Nick Frost, so you know it's going to be great. Uh, and, yeah, basically they play, which is funny because I haven't seen Hot Fuzz or The World's End yet. Um, but, yeah, basically it stars Simon Pegg as Shaun uh, and Nick Frost as Ed, his best friend. As they try and fight off the zombie apocalypse while bringing their, their, uh, Sean's ex-girlfriend, her friends, and his mom, his mom and dad, to a pub to hide out from the zombies. It's, it's a fantastic film. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, it's a fantastic film. Uh, the other thing I'm going to say before I move on is there is a lot of hidden stuff in this film. You need to watch it more than once. I'm, I, I've seen this movie about four or five times, and every time I'm like... Wait a minute, that's foreshadowing this, and like there's stuff in the back, like oh that's that's awesome, uh, like there's stuff I'm still noticing in this film in the back. Every line of dialogue comes back in, in in later in the film. Everything is is worthy of note in this film. For example, uh, I'm not even gonna give any any examples. Just watch this movie for yourself eight or nine times in a row, please. This is a funny film. Check it out, Shaun of the Dead, number forty on my list. Let's continue. Thank you very much. Uh, coming in at number 39, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie from 2004. This is obviously SpongeBob. Anyone who saw my top TV shows knows I love SpongeBob. Uh, this is a movie uh, based on SpongeBob, like I said. Uh, and of course, this is one that I bought because I watched it. This is the first movie I ever saw. I'm 100% sure. The first movie I ever saw was the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. And of course, there's no fucking disc inside because I lost it somewhere. I don't even know. It's at, it's at a previous house somewhere. Some lucky kid gets gets my fucking SpongeBob DVD. Um, but yeah, the SpongeBob, it's it guest, uh, guesting uh, Scarlett Johansson. Beautiful Scarlett Johansson. Young Scarlett Johansson from 2004. So I think she would have been 19. 19, no, 18 because I'm lost in translation. She was 17, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, uh, Scarlett Johansson in... Uh, is Mindy. Everyone else returns from the original show, which is awesome. I love that. It's it's just an awesome film. Uh, Plankton, evil son of a bitch he is, uh, steals the king's crown right here uh, and frames Mr. Krabs. So in order to save the town and Mr. Krabs, uh, SpongeBob and Patrick and Squidward, oh, Sp SpongeBob and Patrick um, go out onto the uh, go out on a journey and they do their best to get the crown. So yeah, Spongebob, the movie, just check it. It's a fun movie. I think it's the highest rated non-horror movie, uh, animated, that is, um, that's on the list. It's, it's just a great film. Please check it out. 
Coming in at number 30 is the John Wick Trilogy, 2014, 2017, 2019 for chapter 1, 2, and 3. Uh, personally, this is the this is the trilogy that made me have relief in current cinema, current rated R action cinema. Because honestly, when I saw the first John Wick, it's it's my favorite. It's still my favorite John Wick. I put the poster of the the one I like the most, and it's it's the first one. John Wick one is so fucking awesome. They're all fucking awesome. They're fucking amazing action films. Because uh, they're not just action, they actually have a plot to them. And, and they build the lore of the world as well uh, with the action. Keanu Reeves is so awesome. All, all I can say is just please check out these movies. I'm not giving any plot details. Absolutely amazing films. Please check them out. Coming in at number 37 is Natural Born Killers from 1998. With Woody Harrelson, Juliette Lewis, Robert Downey Jr., and Tommy Lee Jones, and Rodney Dangerfield. Of course, this is one that I watched because I bought it. Um, I actually bought it because of who was in it. And I knew I had the release date wrong. I knew it was not 98. I had a feeling it was 94. Uh, so yeah, Natural Born Killers from 94. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing film. It's a little messed up from, from some people's standpoints. Uh, but yeah, basically it stars uh, Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis as uh, Mickey and Mallory, who are killers. They, they pretty much... Uh, Woody Harrelson meets Juliette Lewis, and and they they pretty much just go killing people. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is is a TV host who's trying to uh, capture the story of them, and Tommy Lee Jones is uh, I believe it's an FBI agent or some type of agent uh, who's trying to stop them at any cost. And there's also oh, I can't remember his name. I'm not gonna pick up the DVD, but what's his name is also in this. You know what's great? I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that up and look for his name. It is. Oh, wow, that was uh, Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore uh, plays a, a cop, I think, a cop, uh, who's also trying to stop Mickey and Mallory. But this he's more or less trying to kill them. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's an awesome film, honestly. Uh, please check it out. Absolutely amazing movie. Coming up at number 36 is The Truman Show. This is actually from 1998. Uh, this is uh, Jim Carrey's second best film, I believe, on the list. Uh, absolutely amazing. One of his best dramatic roles, in my opinion, because this I consider this a drama more or less than more or less than a comedy. Um, it's it's an absolutely f amazing film. A great concept. You're you you've been broadcast to the world your entire life, and you have no idea about it. It's even sparked a, a the uh, not a theory, but a uh, a, a paranoia. Uh, not it hasn't sparked, but it's been named a paranoia. I think it's the Truman Show. Uh, the Truman Show effect or something like that. Uh, honestly, this is just a great film. It's about Truman, played by Jim Carrey, uh, who's been on the air, who's been on broadcast since, he's been on TV broadcast live his entire life since the day he was born. Um, and he, he eventually figures out what's going on, or he tries to figure out what's going on. And yeah, it's, it's a great, great film. So that's all I'm going to say about it. The Truman Show, please check it out. Coming in at number 35 is Iron Man from 2008, and this is one of the two movies that I bought recently that you have not seen, Iron Man on DVD. I bought this recently. You guys have not seen this on video yet. That's the first time, and before you ask, yes, it is the two-disc edition. Honestly, that is, I, I'm just incredibly happy about that, honestly. Uh, this film's amazing. This film is awesome. Probably, I believe it's my favorite superhero movie on the list. Uh, yes, it is. It's the, it's my favorite superhero movie that's on the list. Um, Iron Man is just absolutely am awesome. Robert Downey Jr. plays Iron Man to a T. The only good Tony Stark is Robert Downey Jr. Jeff Bridges is also in this movie. Terrence Howard is not as good as Don Cheadle, but this is the best Iron Man movie. Having Don Cheadle would have probably pushed it into 34, 33, maybe. Um, there was no script to this movie, apparently. There was or very little of a script uh, that kept getting changed day, day of day of the, the filmings. Uh, the fact this movie even got made and sparked the MCU is incredible. Uh, just please check it out. Check out all the Iron Man movies. They're all great, in my opinion. In my opinion, personally. Uh, though if I did have to rank them, one, two, three. Um, so technically they got worse, but it's really which one's the least good rather than which one is the worst. Uh, so yeah, Iron Man, please check it out. It's a great film. Coming in at number 34 is The Social Network from 2010, and this is one of those 
that I watched it because I bought it. Uh, Social Network, sadly, not the two-disc edition. But, I mean, hey, when you're paying $1.25 for the movie, what can you expect? Uh, it's a movie. It's, it is a movie. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg, Andrew Garfield, and Justin Timberlake are great in this. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg plays... Uh, um, Mark uh, Mark uh, Mark uh, Zuck Mark uh, Mark uh, Zuckybot um, Mark Zuckbot from uh, from Facebook the owner of, of Facebook um, and it's basically the story of how Facebook was made and the legal issues and how Mark Zuckerberg fucked over um, his friends uh, in making the site and honestly it's it's a great film it's a great film whether you love Mark Zuckerberg or you fucking hate his guts like I do um, but yeah. Uh, it's it's a great film, David Fincher obviously, and the screenplay was written by uh, Aaron Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin, who apparently is a really good screenwriter. I've seen a lot of videos uh, talking about how he's one of the greatest screenwriters of all time. I probably would agree uh, once I see more of his films. But just from the Social Network, he's a really good screenwriter. Uh, screenplay writer. Uh, everyone does great in this film. Everyone, in my opinion, uh, it's a great film. Check it out. Thank you very much. Coming in at number 33 is Burn After Reading from 2008, and this is the other movie that I bought without you guys seeing it first, uh, Burn After Reading. Great, great film. Uh, this movie stars uh, George Clooney, Franz McDormand, John Malkovich, Tilda Swinton, and Brad Pitt. Um, it's, it's, it's an honestly, it's a great, great film. Uh, it's, it's a Coen Brothers film. That should give you an inkling to watch it. I believe it's the highest ranking Coen Brothers film, I'm pretty sure, I'm not going to look, just because I don't want to waste more time in this video, than I've already wasted, it's probably an hour and a half in, which, if anyone's still watching, um, thank you very much if you are, uh, but basically, George Clooney is, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to begin to say the plot, I have to wrap my head around it, so it's a fantastic film, uh, please, please check it out, it's just an awesome film, very, very funny, probably the Coen Brothers funniest film in my opinion, Burn After Reading, please check it out. Number 32 is The Room from 2003. I unironically love this film. It's fucking hilarious. Um, honestly, honestly, this is the, this is one of the best, this is the best, worst, best film ever made, honestly. Um, this film is sadly one I don't own on DVD. I'd love to get it, though. Um, but The Room, it's... A hilarious film. Uh, I would love once I move to Toronto. I'd love to attend one of the the screenings that they do monthly, which is insane to think about that they do that. Um, but the room, it's obviously a Tommy Wiseau film. Uh, he produced it, directed it, wrote it, starred in it, bankrolled it, and I feel like he did something else with the film. Uh, he was an executive producer, so he produced it twice. Um, but yeah, the story of this film, the actual film. The learning about the making of is all awesome. If you wanna, if you wanna look into it, it's a hilarious film. So many bad parts that it's just hilarious. Um, I love watching this film. I've watched it only once though. I've seen a lot of clips of it afterwards. I'm like, oh, I fucking love this. Hey, Doggy is is one of the best scenes in movie history. Um, keep the change. Hey, Doggy, this is just great. So the room. I don't even need. To, I don't need to explain why it's here. Please check it out. Coming in at number 31 is Django Unchained from 2010. This is one of those films that I actually bought because I watched it, technically. I did want it beforehand because it's Tarantino, but after I saw it, I knew I had to get it. It's still sealed, funny enough. I bought it sealed for like a dollar, and uh, yeah, I knew I had to pick it up. Uh, fantastic film. Jamie Foxx, uh, Christoph Waltz, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kerry Washington, Samuel Jackson, um, Don Johnson apparently is also in this. Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins is fucking badass. Um, everyone in this film is amazing. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, unless there's a movie I'm forgetting about that he's in on this list, there actually is, probably gives his best performance in this movie, in my opinion, and he's only in it for about 45 or so minutes. Um, 45 minutes to an hour. It's an absolutely amazing film. Uh, and the funny, funny thing, this came out Christmas Day of 2012, so it's been almost seven years to the date. Or it's been seven years to the date when I'm uploading this. Uh, that this movie came out. So happy 7th anniversary, Django Unchained. It's an absolutely fantastic fina film. It's phenomenal. One of, one of Tarantino's best. It might be his best film? I know, no, no, it's not. There's two more films above his. But it's definitely one of his best, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, Django Unchained. Absolutely great film. Please check it out. 
Jamie Foxx is a slave. Uh, Christoph Waltz gets him out, and they they have to re- they try and rescue his 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 wife, uh, Jamie Foxx's wife, from Leonardo DiCaprio because she's his slave. It's a phenomenal film. Please check it out. Thank you very much. Coming in at number thirty, you know how I said there was going to be another Robin Williams movie from two thousand two after. Uh, after Insomnia, and then there was Death to Smoochie, and then I said there was another one. This is that other movie. One hour photo from 2002. This is one instance where I bought it to watch it. I watched it because I bought it. One hour photo is a fantastic film. I don't get why it doesn't get nearly talked about. It should get talked about as much as possible. It's a fantastic film. Uh, it's a great thriller. I wouldn't exactly consider it horror. There's technically a jump scare, even though... You sort of see it coming, um, but one hour photo. It's a phena- it's a phenomenal film. A phenomenal, phenomenal film. Uh, Robin Williams gives his best performance in a movie I've ever seen personally. I, I honestly I can't get over how good he is in this film. Robin Williams is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, please check out this movie. Uh, he he plays Cy Cy Parrish, the the photo guy. I like to think I, there's a theory that I have personally. That I'll have to get to in a future video, uh, but basically he Robin Williams, Robin Williams plays Cy. He's been the photo guy at uh, a, a, like a one hour photo. It's called a one hour. It's a one hour photo place, um, and basically he gets to know this family. He's known them uh, their entire life or his uh, the kids entire life, and basically he he tries to get closer to them, and it's just a fantastic film. Please check it out. One Hour Photo is just a fucking fantastic film. Thank you very much. Coming in at number 29 is Under the Skin from 2013. The stars, uh, stars Scarlett Johansson. This is one that I watched because I bought it. This was $2 at the Gi- at Giant Tiger, which is basically like a dollar store type place in a way. $2 for one of the greatest films I've ever seen. That's a bargain. This should be at least 30 This should be a Criterion movie. Or there should be a Criterion collection of that. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's a great film. Um, but I know it says 2014, but it's a 2013 film. It came out at first in 2013. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it got its original uh, limited release in 2013, so I put 2013. Um, but basically, it's, it stars Scarlett Johansson. She's an alien, and she, she takes guys hostage. Uh, not takes guys hostage. She seduces guys to going home with her and does stuff with them. It's not shown what she does with them, but it's it's heavily suggested in my opinion. Um, and a, fun fact: a lot of the scenes in this film were improvised. Uh, the scenes where she's out in the car, cause she's in the UK in this film, where she's out in the car picking up pick, picking up random guys. That was those are all completely unscripted. They had to get the guys to sign afterwards. Hey, do you want to be in the movie? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then they film more with them. And there was one guy in particular that I think. Got a little bit of fame because of this movie, actually. I'm not going to say who it is, but when you see him in the film, you should know. Uh, Under the Skin, phenomenal film. Please check it out if you love art house films. This is the ultimate art house film, in my opinion. Absolutely amazing. Plus, if you like it, you see ScarJo naked in this film. So, uh, Scarlett Johansson naked probably bumps it up a spot or two, in my opinion. So, uh, 29, Under the Skin, great film. Coming in at number 28 is American Beauty from 1998, and this is another where I watched it because I bought it. Uh, I've wanted to see, I'd wanted to see American Beauty for a while, uh, and then I finally did get to watch it, and then I was like, oh, hell yeah, this is a pretty good movie. Um, it basically stars Kevin Spacey. He's going through a midlife crisis. He, uh, he quits his job, and he, he's tired of, of being uh, talked down uh, to by his... Um, by his by his wife and his daughter just does whatever she wants pretty much played by Thor Birch who's absolutely gorgeous love Thor Birch um not like I love you but like she's awesome love her uh, that type of way just don't want to confuse just, same way I love ScarJo in that way or Scar Johansson my apologies she's in ScarJo um but yeah basically it follows Kevin Spacey as he goes through a midlife crisis he falls in love with his his daughter's best friend who's underage uh, who's who's a big slut? Pretty much loves having sex. Uh, pretty much a um, uh, I don't want to say nympho- nymphomaniac, but she she loves having sex. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a fantastic movie. Uh, check it out, American Beauty. Great movie. Plus, if you like it, 
Thorbert shows her 17-year-old underage boobies in this movie. <laughs> so, there's also that if you're underage like me and you're able to look at that type of shit without getting arrested, which... There's a lot of people that probably get arrested for that now that I think about it. But her parents consented to it, so it's perfectly fucking fine. <laughs> Check out American Beauty. It's actually a really fucking good movie. Really, really beautiful. Coming in at number 27, a film that I don't have yet, which I really, really want. Uh, Ghost World, scar uh, starring Thora Birch and Scarlett Johansson, the two girls I was just talking about. Uh, they were, of course, in a movie together, Ghost World. Absolutely amazing film. It stars Thora Birch. It's actually based on a comic book. Uh, I believe uh, Thor Birch plays a character. <laughs> she does. Um, and basically her best friend is Scarlett Johansson. Uh, they're both graduating from high school and they want to move in together. Um, but they end up meeting, uh, but or, or Thor Birch's character ends up meeting Steve Buscemi's character. And it's basically their friendship as it evolves through a prank call into an actual friendship. It's a really, really good film. I'd recommend you see it, please. Uh, despite the fact that the only negative for me personally is Scarlett Johansson's character is apparently trimmed down a lot from her character in the comic book. Apparently her, com her character in the comic book is like almost the second main character. So, plus it's Scarlett Johansson. But, hey, Steve Buscemi for Scarlett Johansson, take, take your pick. You, you, you can't get enough of either of them, in my opinion. So, Ghost World, great film. Check it out. Coming up next, uh, the only good Spike Lee film... Bring me the hate, Spike Lee, bitches. Uh, 25th Hour from 2002. This stars Edward Norton, which probably will explain why I like it so much. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Rosario Dawson, Anna Paquin, and Brian Cox. Love me some Cox. <laughs> no, but seriously, this, this is a great film. Um, explaining how it's this high. I, almost, I realized I almost just put it at the meme number where it should have been. Uh, thankfully, I didn't. I'm very happy I didn't. But, uh, but 25th Hour, uh, the only good Spike Lee film, Edward Norton plays a character who uh, gets busted for having pot, or, or gets uh, busted for having uh, drugs on him, um, uh, and basically he's set to go to jail in 24 hours, uh, so 25th Hour, he goes to jail, uh, and it follows him throughout the, the day, that he, the day before he's supposed to go to jail, and whether he wants to run away or rather he wants to stay and face the consequences of, of going to jail. Uh, it's a really, really good film. Uh, everyone plays their role perfectly in this film. Though in my opinion, I think the breakout, uh, or the, the, the one who steals the show, of course, that from everyone, because everyone's always going to be the king whenever he's in a film, is Anna Paquin. Anna Paquin is amazing in this film. She's really, really good. She, she's always been beautiful in my opinion. But this film, for some reason, she looks the best she's ever looked. Now watch, she was like fucking 14 in this film and... I'm a pedophile, technically. Uh, look, don't take that out of context, please. Thank you very much. But Anna Paquin plays her character brilliantly in this film. Uh, she does not steal the light from from Amber Norm, but she comes pretty damn close to doing so. Uh, it's a great film. Check it out. The only good Spike Lee film, like I said. Check it out. Coming in at number 25 is Punch Drunk Love from 2002. Two films in a row with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in it. It's a damn good film. Also with Adam Sandler and Emily uh, Watson and uh, Louis Gussman. Uh, this film follows uh, Adam Sandler's character as he um, as he as he he goes through his very mundane life, um, trying to trying to trying to work, and he ends up meeting Emily Watson through his sister. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman is the owner of a call girl, of a call girl uh, place that's scamming Adam Sandler out of uh, hundreds, thousands of dollars. Not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, it's a Paul Thomas Anderson film, so that explains why I probably love it so much. You're going to see a bit more of him. Uh, I believe there's one other film that of his that you're going to see on this list. Uh, Punch Drunk Love, please check it out. It's a really, really good film, and I really love it. Check it out. Coming in at number 24 is Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, which of course is the movie that I believe I watched it because I bought it. This is an absolutely amazing film. I believe the best film of 2015, I want to say right away. Yes, the best film of 2015. Oh my god, this is a phenomenal film. Um... Uh, Michael Keaton, Zach Galifianakis, Edward fucking Norton, Emma Stone, Naomi Watts, uh, Amy Ryan, everyone in this film brings it their all. There is not a single bad actor in this film. 
Um, everyone plays their role perfectly, honestly. The breakout is Michael Keaton because he had a, re- a career resurgence because of this film. Um, it's a rated R film. I, I honestly think the best films are mostly rated R at this point. For the most part, I think. Probably. Um, but Birdman or The Unexpected... I'm just going to call it Birdman or... Uh, Birdman or is a great film. Uh, honestly, I absolutely love uh, this movie. It's filmed in one take. Um, wink, wink. But it's it's phenomenal. Any way you want to look at it, it's a great, great film. Just please check it out. It's about Michael Keaton's character who's trying to have a career resurgence um, and puts on wants to put on this play to prove that he still has it left in him. And it's all the characters around him um, are, are amazing characters. And Michael Keaton's especially is a great character because it's very, very much like Michael Keaton himself where he was trying to have a career resurgence at this time. And thankfully he did because of this film. Uh, Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, check it out. Fantastic film. Coming in at number 23 is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse from 2018. Uh, I believe this is actually a teaser poster. Uh, This is a great film, honestly. I I put it ahead of Birdman based on the fact that I absolutely love this film just a slight bit more than Birdman. Um, Also, the one-year anniversary since it's been in theaters, I'm pretty sure. I don't think it came out in 2017. I'm more than positive it didn't come out in 2017. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. So, happy one-year anniversary to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. You've been bringing me joy for almost six months now. Uh, This is a great, great film. Great cast. Uh, Jake Johnson, I believe is his name, is in this. Haley Steinfeld, which should give give you a hint as to why I love this film so much. Uh, It's a great film. Introduced me to Sway Lee's only good song with Post Malone, uh, Sunflower. Uh, This is a great film. Beautifully animated. Um... The best Spider-Man film, in my opinion. Uh, Homecoming is not on this list, but it's a really good Spider-Man film. I have not seen the original trilogy just yet, but it's it's a great film, Into the Spider-Verse. Please check it out. Uh, there's a lot of Spider-Men in this film. I love it. Please, please check it out. It's a great film. Coming in at number 22 is Groundhog Day from 1993. Uh, this is a fun- This is a great, hilarious film. One of the funniest I've ever seen, in my opinion. Uh, and of course, this is one that I watched it because I bought it. Uh, or I think I bought it because I watched it, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, Blu-ray, of course. Great, great film. Uh, of course, it's about Bill Murray, who is sent, who's a news reporter or a news anchor. He's sent to this place uh, to celebrate Groundhog's Day, talk about the event. Um, and he goes through the day, and then when he wakes up, he's in the same day again. And it's over and over again until he figures out what he has to do. It's a fantastic film. Very, very funny. My favorite, I think. Uh, no, my second, no, third favorite Bill Murray film. Uh, it's a great movie. Please check it out. Groundhog Day, great movie. Coming in at number 21 is Death Proof. Now, I, I know a lot of people are going to be like, Death Proof? Death Proof. Death Proof is a great film in my opinion. Um, honestly, I, 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 I'm going to say it right now. This is the second best Tarantino film. And I have to look to make sure there's no other Tarantino films. Okay, third favorite Tarantino film. It's the third best Tarantino film in my opinion. This film is just so, so good. Honestly, I think a lot of people were expecting a typical Tarantino film here. It's really not your typical Tarantino film, but it's still a fantastic film. And, of course, I had to buy it on DVD. I bought it because I watched it. I was not expecting much from this movie. But it's absolutely amazing. It's a great film. Kurt Russell is badass in it. Uh, I believe that's Sidney Poitier. Is Sidney Poitier in this? Holy shit. Uh, Zoe Bell, Mary Elizabeth Winston, uh, Rosario Dawson, uh, Rose McGowan. It's a great film. Please check out Death Proof. Kurt Russell is a badass. Everyone in this film is awesome. Love Zoe Bell. She's great in this film. Check it out. Death Proof. Fantastic film. One of Tarantino's best, in my opinion. Coming in at number 20 as we enter the top 20 now, Coraline from 2009. Uh, personally, this is this I believe this is the best animated film I have on the list. Uh, I have it on DVD, of course. Uh, sadly, only the one disc edition. 2D and 3D, though. Sadly, no 3D glasses left from it. Um, but this movie is one... 
it's so creepy. It's the uh, best horror film, actually, I believe, on the list. Uh, the best animated, uh, best horror, and best, uh, uh, yeah, I guess stop motion film, because it's the only stop motion, I think, film on the list. Uh, it's so good. It's one of my favorite films, obviously, of all time, obviously. Uh, it's just a great film. It's The atmosphere it builds is amazing. The lore of the universe is great. Um, Dakota Fanning gives her second best performance behind a movie that's going to show up on the list in just a couple minutes, I believe. Uh, but Coraline is a great film. The stop motion is beautiful. Love the look of it. The horror is awesome. Uh, great in this film, really. Um, the few comedic moments are great. The soundtrack, this everything about this film is great. Which Why isn't it number one? Because there's 19 other films that I had to rank here. And I had to put Coraline at number 20. I couldn't justify, in my opinion, at least putting it above 20, ni these 19 other films. Maybe a few I could have made a case for. But at this point, the list is final. Coraline, please check it out. Coming in at number 19 is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind from 2004. Uh, this is a movie with Jim Carrey, uh, Kate Winslet, Mark Ruffalo, Kristen Dunst, uh, Kirsten Dunst, excuse me, Elijah Wood, and Tom Wilkinson. And David Cross is also in this film. And, uh, oh no, it's not going to tell me who else. Rip. Um, but yeah, this film is a masterpiece in my opinion. Um, now with that being said, uh, there's going to be a few films that are masterpieces like this that are early in the list. Not early, but are early in the top 20 that technically if I were ranking them by the best would probably be top 10, but I'm ranking these by my favorite, not my best. Not the best movies. Uh, of course I have this one on DVD. I bought it, I watched it because I bought it. Um, this is an absolutely amazing film. Kate Winslet steals the show in my opinion. That's why I used her poster, or the poster of her for this film. It's it's just a phenomenal film. Jim Carrey uh, basically meets Kate Winslet, uh, Kate Winslet's Clementine, Clementine, and uh, they get together in a relationship. Eventually, she she wants out of it. She erases him from her memory, and he does the same. Uh, but he regrets it and starts to try and find her in his in his memories to remember her. Um, it's it's a phenomenal film. It's heartbreaking at some points. Honestly, I think. For this movie, during like the final 20 minutes, the first time I watched it, I was bawling my eyes out. I don't know why exactly what made me do it, but I was just bawling my eyes out for the final like 20 minutes when I saw this for the first time. It's such a great movie. Uh, please check it out. Absolutely love this film. One of my favorites and one of my one of the best in my opinion. A Charles Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Please check it out. Number 18, I'm still here from 2010 with Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, one of Joaquin Phoenix's best films in my opinion. I believe it might be the best that he's ranked on this list. Yes, the best that he's ranked on this list, number 18, I'm still here. Um, honestly, this film is just absolutely amazing. It's Technically, it's more of a mockumentary than a movie, but screw it, I'm counting mockumentaries here. Um, I'm still here follows Joaquin Phoenix from 2008 to 2010. It's directed by Casey Affleck, and he's in the film, obviously. Um, but focuses on Walking Phoenix from 2008 to 2010. Sorry. Um, as he uh, retires from acting and moves into a, a career in hip hop music. Um, yeah, and he it's it's his downfall basically. It's his story of his, his fake downfall. It's a great great film. Please check it out. Please, it's absolutely amazing really funny as well and i love that they don't uh they don't say oh hey this is fake at any point during the film it's it's just absolutely amazing i'm still here please check it out joaquin we all fucking love you man number 17 once upon a time in hollywood from 2019 tarantino's second best film in my opinion uh this is just a great film honestly it's this film is just so good. I love this movie so much. Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie. Everyone that's in this film plays their role perfectly, in my opinion. Uh, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are amazing. They have amazing chemistry for the first time ever on screen together. And, of course, with Margot Robbie, who was with Leonardo DiCaprio in a movie that you're going to see on the list very, very shortly. Probably within about four or five numbers. Uh, and I don't believe Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt had, had ever been in a movie together aside from this. Hopefully, they're in a movie together uh, in the future at some point, but... Time will tell. Uh, basically, it follows uh, Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, who are Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, respectively, as they uh, go through uh, 1969 and I believe 68 as well, 68 and 69, 
um, trying to not stay relevant, but they're trying to uh, find work as actors uh, because they uh, Cliff Booth or Rick Dalton was more known as a westerns guy in the fifties, and he's trying to spark. Um, he's trying to uh, he's trying to get. I, I guess famous again, but he's trying to figure out what's going on with Hollywood at this point, and and uh, eventually it ties into the to the Manson family, and that's where Sharon Tate's in the movie. Or that's why she's in the movie. It's phenomenal. The final half hour of this film is so fucking awesome. I'm not gonna say what happens, um, but just be ready for some bloodshed. Um, it's 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 a fantastic final act in my opinion. It's absolutely amazing. Please check it out. One of the best movies in my opinion. One of my favorites, obviously. Please check it out. Coming in at number 16 is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I don't even think I need to justify being this, this high up on the list. I believe it's the funniest... Yes, it's the funniest movie I've ever seen, in my opinion. Um, it was released in 1998. Obviously, it's Chevy, Chevy, uh, Chevy, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Uh, it's so funny. Christmas Vacation, the only Christmas film, uh, the only vacation film I've seen. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing, in my opinion. One of the funniest films ever. The funniest film I've ever seen. It's a, it, Just check it out. It's the best Christmas movie ever. Check it out, please. It's absolutely amazing. You'll love it, I'm pretty sure. Please check it out. Great film. Great, great film. Coming in at number 15 is Boogie Nights from 1997. This is a, another fantastic, phenomenal film. This is, with, uh, this is another Paul Thomas Anderson film. The highest ranked, I believe, on the list, I'm pretty sure. Uh, starring Mark Wahlberg, Julianne Moore, John C. Riley, Burt Reynolds, Don Cheadle, uh, Heather Graham, William H. Macy, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and a ton of other uh, big names. I don't know that's it actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, of course this is one that I have on DVD. I bought it because I uh, watched it. Uh, this is at a yard sale. I believe it was three dollars. It's heavily worth it in my opinion. Uh, it's basically about Mark Wahlberg as he uh, turns into a porn star. Uh, his character. Um, oh, what's his what's his character's name? It's the best porn name I've ever heard. Um, damn it. Oh, damn it. What can I? Uh, Dirk Diggler. Dirk Diggler's his character's name, or his, his porn star's name. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Boogie Nights, fantastic film. Please check it out. Really, really good one. I think uh, I think you'll all love it. Coming in at number fourteen is Zombieland from two thousand nine. This is a Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, and Abigail Breslin film. Uh, of course, I do have it on Blu-ray. I did have it on DVD, but I loaned it to someone with Shaun of the Dead. They never gave it back, so fuck them, man. White knuckle tight. Uh, Zombieland, pretty good film. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much, it follows, uh, all four characters as they try and survive the zombie apocalypse. Great film. The sequel isn't as good, but it's still pretty good, but it was not lumped in here, but, uh, but Zombieland, it's a really good film. Really, really funny. The best zombie comedy, in my opinion. Shaun of the Dead does rival it, but Zombieland, in my opinion, is the best. Uh, zombie comedy horror film, one of my favorite films of all time, obviously, being number 14. Yeah, check it out. Coming in at number 13... The Wolf of Wall Street, starring Leonardo DiCaprio with Jonah Hill, Margot Robbie, and Matthew McConaughey in supporting roles, along with Kyle Chandler and John Favreau, apparently. Um, yeah, this is one that I do have on DVD. I bought it because I watched it. I did have it before on Burned, but now I have it on actual DVD. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street, it's a fucking amazing film. Uh, it's a Martin Scorsese film, obviously, as was uh, Taxi Driver. And I feel like there was another film that was on the list that was a Martin Scorsese film I didn't mention, but I... Don't remember. Um, Wolf of Wall Street, it's an absolutely amazing film, in my opinion. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio gives one of his best performances ever in a movie. Margot Robbie, in her first mainstream film, uh, gets naked, which, love that. Uh, <laughs> love Margot Robbie. She's one of my favorite actresses of all time, as you can probably tell by the Top 30 Actors Actresses video that, I, that went up earlier this week. Um, yeah, uh, Margot Robbie does very very well for what she she is given in this movie um jonah hill is also really really good he he plays he's very very well uh dramatically in this film as well as comedically when there are the comedic moments as well as in moneyball as i didn't mention earlier uh but yeah the wolf of wall street it's a great film it follows uh leonardo caprio as he plays jordan belfort it's uh, based on a true story 
um, as he plays Jordan Belfort, as he scams his way to the top of the of Wall Street, pretty much. It's a fina- it's a phenomenal film, phenomenal film. Please, please check it out. Coming up next is No Country for Old Men. It's a Coen Brothers film. That should give you enough inkling to watch it. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, Jeff Bardem, and Josh Brolin. Uh, this is a movie that I watched because I bought it. This was at Giant Tiger. I want to say it was like five bucks or something like that. I don't know. I think this is one that was actually at the pawn shop that I frequented a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, No Country for Old Men. I believe the best movie of 2007. I'm more than positive best movie of 2007. Um, it's a fantastic film. Jeffrey Bardem steals the movie with his performance. It's worthy just for that, honestly. It's about pretty much Tommy Lee Jones and Josh Brolin as they try and take down Jeffrey Bardem uh, for different reasons. That's all I'm going to say about the plot. It's a fantastic film. Please check it out. Please, please, please. Um, as with any of these films, as we get closer to the, as as we get closer to the bottom, I know you guys are probably going to expect me to say a lot more about these films. But since they're my favorites, I'd rather you guys watch them yourselves and experience them the way I did, pretty much. So, yeah, uh, No Country for Old Men, great film. Coming in at number eleven is Goodfellas with Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro, and Joe Pesci. Of course, this is one that I watched because I bought it. I bought it on Blu-ray. It was eight dollars at a at the at the Giant Tiger. I do not regret it at all. Eight dollars for that movie is fantastic. Uh, it's a, an amazing, amazing film. The best crime drama film I've ever seen. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'd like it more. I, I would like it more than Scarface. I've not seen Scarface with Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Um, but yeah, obviously, of course, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci did return, I believe, with Al Pacino, actually, in The Irishman, which came out uh, last month, which I really need to see. I really need to see The Irishman. Um, yeah, Goodfellas is a fantastic film. Uh, of course, as everyone talks about that, that one-take shot, um, there was a movie I wanted to mention with a one-take shot that I, f- that I forgot to mention. Shit. Um, but yeah, Goodfellas, the, the one-take shot, obviously, the acting is amazing. Um, the soundtrack is great. It really signifies when the story takes place. It really, uh, solidifies when it takes place. Um, the acting, the fact that it stays so close to the actual story is probably one of the biggest reasons uh, why I love it so much. It's fun. It's great for that. Honestly, I love that. Uh, this is another Martin Scorsese film. I believe this is the, actually the highest rated Scorsese film. Um, I can't talk enough good shit about Goodfellas. It's one of the greatest films I've ever seen. Watch it as soon as you can, please and thank you. Coming in at number 10 as we enter the top 10 now. Lost in Translation with Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. And as we get into the top 10, more movies are going to show up that I actually do own. Like Lost in Translation. I watched this because I bought it. I'm going to stop saying that probably. Uh, It stars Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Bill Murray is basically uh, sort of stuck in a rut. He's... um, He's pretty much, uh, he's in Japan and he's he's advertising this this beer or soda or something. It's whiskey, I think. Um, when he meets Scarlett Johansson's character, who's also stuck in a rut, she's with in a relationship, uh, married, I believe, actually married uh, to someone she doesn't want to be married to. Um, and honestly, it's it's a really really good movie as they um, as they they sort of find each other, I guess. Uh, it's rated R for some reason. I don't get why it's rated R. Um, on the back of the DVD, it says it's PG, but then again, it is Canadian, so, yeah, I don't get why Lost in Translation is rated R, I can't really see, oh, some sexual content, I didn't really find there to be sexual content at all in the film, really, unless there's something I'm missing in the film, but, Lost in Translation, fantastic film, please check it out, just please go watch it, like, with any of these films, the majority of these films, I'm not gonna say anything about them, because I want you guys to see them for yourself, so, Lost in Translation, please check it out. Coming in at number 9 is the Back to the Future trilogy from 1985, 1989, and 1990. Uh, You really cannot put these separate. You have to put them together whenever you put them on your top movie list. Uh, Of course, I do have the 25th Anniversary trilogy. This is the re-release, so sadly it's not the version with the big box. Of course, there's one, two, three, and the bonus disc. Love that. Um, But yeah, Back to the Future. Uh, Two is probably my favorite, personally. Um, but all three of them are great. You have to put them, uh, you have to put them together. Uh, personally, I, I'm, there has to be a fan edit somewhere where there's like a seven hour, like a mega cut of these movies all together. Um, and when there is, I'm going to watch it eventually I, on stream. I'm hoping eventually, but yeah, the back to the future films obviously follows doc Brown and, 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 and Marty, uh, Marty McFly. 
it's it's a fantastic film. It's like go back to the future, back to the past, back all over. It's a phenomenal film series. Probably the best trilogy of films I've ever seen. Watch them as soon as you can, please. Thank you so much. Highest ranking Spielberg films, I believe. Check them out. Coming in at number eight is Reservoir Dogs. And this is one that I bought twice uh, before I watched it, actually. I had the DVD and then I bought the Blu-ray because I thought it would have the same features, but really didn't. Um, but yeah, Reservoir Dogs, the first of Tarantino's many films. And by that, I mean nine. Um, this is absolutely a great film. Uh, Tarantino's best, in my opinion. Tarantino has never been able to top uh, Reservoir Dogs. Okay. Uh, Tarantino has never been able to top Reservoir Dogs, as I just said. It's just an absolutely amazing film. Check it out, please. I can't say anything uh, that, and that hasn't been said already. It's a great film. Um, of course, Harvey Keenel, uh, uh, Tim Roth, Chris, uh, Chris Penn, uh, Steve Buscemi, Lawrence Trini, and Michael Madsen, and um, um, Quentin Tarantino himself in this film. Uh, it's one of the greatest films I've ever seen. One of my favorites. Check it out. It's so, so good. Please just watch it. Number seven is I, Tanya from 2017. This is yet another film that I do own on Blu-ray, and I'm very happy to own it on Blu-ray. Uh, Margot Robbie, Sebastian Stan, Austin Janney are in this film. Absolutely amazing casting there for um, uh, for Tanya Harding, Jeff Galilee, and uh, Lavana Lavana Harding. I believe is her name is Tanya's mother's name. Uh, this is a fantastic film. It's great. Uh, it feels it feels really so real. Obviously, it's based on a true story, but the movie itself feels so real. I love that they don't just tell you one side from Tanya or Jeff. They mix both in, and you know you get both, and you get interviews with the actual with Tanya and Jeff. Uh, and Lavana and and uh, and Fat Fuck, um, that all done as with the actors with uh, the guy who's in Richard Jewell, I believe. Uh, oh, what's his name? Not Bobby Carnival. I, I his name's not on here for some reason, or at least I don't think that's his name. Um, I mean, he's the one that's in Richard Jewell. He play he plays this character really well. Sebastian Stan is great. Allison Janney is amazing. Margot Robbie is fucking phenomenal in this film. Her best performance, in my opinion. Uh, I, Tanya is, is really the movie that, in my opinion, for me, is her coming out party. I think Wolf of Wall Street was a great film. It's like, oh, damn, Margot Robbie, she's very, very sexy. Suicide Squad was like, okay, she can play characters well. But I, Tanya, in my opinion, is the movie that it's like, holy shit, she can act. Like, obviously, it was obvious she, she can act. She's a really good actress. But this is the movie where it's like, oh, my God, she's amazing. Um... It's rated R, of course, which explains why I love it so much. I thought it was PG-13, honestly, for a while at least. Uh, but I, I, Tanya, one of the greatest films in my opinion. One of my be one of my favorite films. I could watch this over and over again and never get tired of it. I have watched it over and over again, uh, multiple times with the director's commentary actually with Jeff, uh, uh, Craig uh, Craig Gillespie, Craig Gillespie, who did an amazing job directing this film. Everyone did amazing on this job. One of the best films ever. Please check it out, I, Tanya. Great film. Number six is Fight Club from 1999. Uh, I love, I always loved this poster from, f whenever I saw it, it's like, hey, that's a great poster. And I'd love to get it, honestly. And of course, this is another film I do have on Blu-ray. Absolutely love Fight Club. I love the intro to this DVD as well. If, you, if, you've, if you've bought in the 10th anniversary edition Blu-ray and you know the, 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 mo the intro to the movie, you're, that's, that's, that's a great one. Uh, it's a, it's a fantastic film. It stars Edward Norton and Brad Pitt. Um, Edward Norton's in, in a rut. He he's stuck doing the same thing over and over again. He has insomnia um, until he he has to go to um, like the counseling type of, of classes where it's group sessions or whatever. Uh, he has to go to those in order to stop. He has to he has to cry to 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 really um, you know to to be able to sleep pretty much. Uh, he meets Brad Pitt's character on a plane who's selling soap, and he they end up doing Operation Fight Club, and it, it just spirals out of control from there. It's a fantastic film. Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, Brad, arguably Edward Norton's best performance, except for the film that's going to be coming up in two spots. Um, Fight Club is absolutely amazing. It's a great film. Please check it out. Fantastic character study as well. Please check it out as soon as you can. Coming in at number five, I know it's going to be weird to put this above Fight Club, The Edge of Seventeen from 2016. And yet again, this is another film I do have on Blu-ray. One of my favorite films of all time. The most rewatchable film, in my opinion, at least. Um, 
It's it's an absolutely amazing film. I love The Edge of Seventeen. Haley Steinfeld, who's God, look, it's beautiful. Uh, Woody Harrelson, who's awesome in the show. Uh, Kara Segwidge, Haley Lou Richardson, who was in Split, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Blake Jenner, I believe is his name. Yeah, Blake Jenner. Uh, he's also pretty good. Everyone in this film is amazing. It is pretty good. Uh, Haley Steinfeld definitely steals the show. As with I, Tanya, I think this is Haley Steinfeld's coming out party. Technically, it would be true, great, if, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but I think Edge of 17 is really Haley Steinfeld's coming out party where it's like, wow, yeah, she's a great actor. She can really act very, very well. Um, and, and honestly, I really, really love this film. Uh, funny enough, because I'm 17 now, I really do really like this film. Um, it's, it's one of the best movies I've seen. One, obviously one of my favorites, top five worthy. Uh, please just check out The Edge of Seventeen whenever you can. It's, it's Haley Steinfeld stars, obviously. Um, and she, she, uh, she plays Nadine, uh, as she is, se she's 17 in the film, obviously. Uh, ironically, The Edge of Seventeen, you would think she's 16, but no, she's 17. Um, and she, basically, her best friend starts going out with her brother, uh, and she's heavily against it, and she's, uh, it's, it's a really, really good film, there's a lot of foreshadowing, and a lot of background stuff that you really don't notice the first time you watch it, I honestly really want to do a commentary of this m movie, and, like, stop it whenever, like, okay, do you see this, this comes up later, blah, 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 blah. but no, I, 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 I'll probably do that eventually sometime, but yeah, Edge of Seventeen, one of my favorite movies of all time, the most rewatchable movie for me, in my opinion, number one is Edge of Seventeen, number two is I, Tonya for that, but, Edge 17, great film, please check it out. Coming in at number four is American History X, and of course, this is yet another film that I do own uh, on DVD this time. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, American History X. Absolutely amazing film, absolutely beautiful. Love this film. It, it stars Edward Norton and Edward Furlong of Terminator 2 fame, or for me, American History X fame. Um, it, it basically, it stars, it pretty much stars Edward Norton as he uh, is, is thrown in jail for uh, murdering, uh, I believe, two black guys who try to steal his car uh, one night. Uh, but, of course, he, he has a reputation. He's, he's a racist. Um, he's, te he's a neo-Nazi. Technically, he's a neo-Nazi. Well, obviously, he has the, 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 the swastika on his, on his chest. So he, he's a neo-Nazi. Not technically. He, he's a neo-Nazi. He's a racist. Uh, and his brother is, is trying to follow in his footsteps. He believes the same thing about him. Uh, but Edward Norton's character goes to jail. And, um, uh, but his, his, his character uh, goes to jail. And he really learns through connecting with a black, uh, black prisoner who's with him at his job uh, to, to really like black people, that, they're, that we're all the same and uh, that hate should not be based on the color of your skin, really. And I know I'm starting to sound like some cliched thing, but this movie is fucking amazing. And then, of course, once he gets home from jail, he uh, he's trying to change his brother's way. It ends in a way that is so fucking sad, but so amazing and beautiful. At least in my opinion, it's a great film. It's such an amazing film. Please check out American History X. I don't care if you're racist. Uh, you can enjoy it for its racism, even though it's obviously smarter than that, for its racism. You can enjoy it if you're, if you hate racism, like me, of course, obviously everyone with common sense hates racism. Uh, you can love it for how beautiful it is, how great it is in filmmaking. Um, of course, what does suck is that I believe Edward Norton's cut is the one that's been never released. I believe he made this film, I believe this film was chopped down to two and a half hours? No, just under two hours. I believe Edward Norton's cut is three hours. Um, so you know what? Fuck the Snyder cut. Screw, screw Zack Snyder. Hashtag get the, release the Norton cut for fucking American History X. Release the Norton cut, baby. Fuck yeah, I want the Edward Norton cut. So yeah, American History X, fantastic film. Absolutely phenomenal. Coming in at number three is The Breakfast Club. And this is another absolutely amazing film. One of the best I've ever seen personally. And sadly, sadly, on this list, the final movie I personally own in my collection on this list. It's just absolutely amazing. Every character in this film, all five of them, are absolutely so memorable. It feels so real. Well, all five of the main teen characters, they just feel so real. Honestly, every single one of them I can relate to and I can't relate to. Uh, honestly, I think I relate, relate the most to Alice, and Al, uh, played by Ali, Sheely, Ali Sheedy. Al, what the fuck is her name? I can't... Why can I not say Ali Sheedy, right? Ali Sheedy? 
My apologies if I really butchered her name. That's I fucking love her character. Allison is just Allison. Honestly, in my opinion, looks looks more beautiful before the makeover. I love that type of look for some reason. Of course, Emilio Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall. Why can't I fuck? Why can't I, what's what the hell's his his name? Uh, Paul Gleason. Paul Gleason? No, Judd Nelson. Uh, Judd Nelson, and of course. Always beautiful Molly Ringwall, who I'm actually, I'm trying to get the pickup artist of Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Just because I want to see more of a young Molly Ringwall. Uh, and I'm not watching Riverdale. I love Molly Ringwall, but I'm not watching Riverdale 4. I'm very, very sorry. Um, but all five of them, all five of them are absolutely amazing characters. I love them. Uh, they're just great. I sounded really robotic when I said that for some reason. Uh, for some reason, it's rated R. I did not realize it was rated R unless I'm getting ribbed and all these are are rated r for no reason uh but the breakfast club is just such a real movie i absolutely love it every single minute of it is is great i don't care if it's outdated when it says faggot or whatever it's a great film breakfast club please check it out one of the greatest movies i've ever seen one of my favorite films please check it out coming in at number two is one of the greatest films i've ever seen my second favorite film of all time her from 2013, that stars Joaquin Phoenix, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Amy Adams, Rooney Mara, and Olivia Wilde. Chris Pratt is also in it. Uh, it's absolutely a phenomenal film. One of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. Probably the most beautiful, honestly. Uh, it takes place in the future. We don't know what year, which is what I love about that, because you don't know what year it takes place. Uh, basically, it stars Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, as he's, he, he's very depressed. He's getting a divorce from his wife. I believe played by Olivia Wilde or Rooney Mara. I'm pretty sure Rooney, uh, Rooney Mara. Um, or Rooney Mara, sorry. Um, until he gets an AI. He gets an AI played by Scarlett Johansson. Originally by uh, Samantha. I can't remember her name. Uh, but her, her, her name is Samantha. And played by Scarlett Johansson. Who basically... Um, he falls in love with her. He falls in love with his AI. His AI. His... 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 Uh, his, 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 his... Fuck, what do they call it? I can't remember. I'm going to say AI. Um, he falls in love with, with her, and she falls in love with him. It's just an absolutely beautiful love story. The most realistic love story I think I've ever seen put to cinema, personally. Um, and this is coming from someone who's never been in a, in a relationship. Holy shit, this film is amazing. I absolutely love every minute of this film. Everything about this film, the directing, the, 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 the writing, the cinematography, the soundtrack, the acting, the casting, just every fucking thing about this film is perfect. Um, honestly, it was so hard to choose between number two and number one, but I put number one for a reason, but her is such a good film. And honestly, the ending, the final 10 minutes always gets me to cry. Every time I watch this movie, which I've seen it two or three times now, which two or three times of watching it and it's this high up should tell you how amazing it is. Her is just such an amazing film. Honestly, Walking Phoenix's Theodore is so relatable even though I've never been in a relationship or felt heartbreak or anything like that, it's, his character is so relatable and feels so real. Please check this movie out as soon as you can. And ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number one, my favorite movie of all time. Now keep in mind, this isn't what I'm thinking is the best movie of all time, though. It might as well well be. It might as well be. This is going to be the greatest movie of all time. Or this is the greatest movie of all time. My favorite movie of all time. Honestly, I, this is just my opinion. If you disagree, I can. that's perfectly fine. Express your thoughts in the comments. Number one for me, in my opinion. Number one, Joker from 2019. This is quite simply the greatest movie I've ever seen. Everything about this film is perfect. Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck, the Joker, is phenomenal. Robert, uh, Robert De Niro uh, as, as, as Murray Franklin is great. Z Zazie Beetz is phenomenal as her character. Every actor is, f every actor is great. The directing is great. The cinema fucking photography is so beautiful. The soundtrack, every song used fits perfectly in my opinion. Especially the song uh, in, at the end, or both songs at the end. Um, honestly, just everything, this film is, is not your typical comic book movie. I know I said, um, uh, what was it? Iron Man was the final comic book movie. Fucking tricked you. Scared you. Scared you. Uh, no, but, but seriously, this movie is the greatest comic book movie I've ever seen. 
the greatest supervillain movie I've ever seen, the greatest anti-hero movie I've ever seen, because he's not even a, a supervillain in this movie. He's an anti-hero, in my opinion, is the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix is the greatest Joker of all time. Fuck Heath Ledger. Fuck Jack, uh, fuck Jack Nicholson. Fuck Jared, legitimately though, fuck Jared Leto. Uh, fuck Cesar Romero. I love them all, except Jared Leto. Fuck Jared Leto. Joaquin Phoenix is the greatest Joker of all time. No one will ever de dethrone him as the king of the jokes. The king of the jokester. Joker is the greatest movie I've ever seen. I've seen it three times now. Once in theaters. Uh, twice bootlegging it uh, illegally. I wanted to see it in theaters again. Mom won't take me. I can't walk because it would be f fucking three hours there or three hours back. But la ladies and gentlemen, please just see Joker. Whether it's in theaters, whether you buy it online, wh whatever you do... Fucking watch this movie. It is the greatest movie ever made, in my opinion. The best movie ever. Please check it out. Please. That's all I can tell you. Just watch this movie. I can beg you for hours. Watch this movie. The greatest movie I've ever seen is Joker. So that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this probably two, two and a half hour long video. I cannot even imagine how long it took to render this. Probably a fucking nightmare to do so. That's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, favorite channel, which exclusive, but it's not limited to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and everything else. My name is Harris. Subscribe to the Puff Club. Subscribe to the HD Club. Shout out to my moderator, Jesse, in the chat. Shout out to my moderator, Jesse, in the chat for getting me this dope webcam I've been using for about two, two and a half months now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're this late into the fucking video, oh my god, I cannot believe that you're this late into the video and you're still watching um thank you so much for watching guys my name is hair race link subscription on my twitter and my twitch <sighs> my twitter is more of a hockey twitter uh my twitch if this is if, if we're at the new place i'm probably going to try streaming in a couple days uh once we get everything set up more or less uh if we're still if we're still at this house then once we get to the new place that's when i'm going to start streaming I'm, i won't be streaming at this place but the new place uh, Amazon Wishlist is in the description. Since this is Christmas Day, uh, I will be doing a Christmas live stream later today. Uh, probably about 10, 20, 30 minutes after this video is done. Uh, probably just need time to set up, get all the uh, the packages ready to open and whatnot and get ready. Um, yeah. Um, wow. Honestly, I, I can't believe I've made it this far into the video. And I'm actually done with the 100 greatest moves of all time for me. Personally, my 100 favorite movies of all time for 2019. Thank you. Wow. Uh, but yeah, the wish list is in the description along with the P.O. Box. Any packages received um, will be uh, will be opened on stream. Or any packages received for Christmas for today will be opened on stream. Any received at a later date will most likely either be opened in a video or I will be doing m and I will be doing Monday Night Mail. Uh, more than likely, I would think personally. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh, God. And the letterbox is in the description. That's where I rate and review movies. Uh, check it out if you want to know what movies I love and movies I hate, unless you want to rewatch the video multiple times. But spoiler, bad comment to get you a very big dislike from me. Check out the letterbox in the future, unless you would rather wait for the next edition in 2020, when I do this at the end of 2020. Hopefully I'll do it at the end of 2020. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Letterbox, Amazon Wishlist, P.O. Box, Twitter, Twitch, all that goodness in the description. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Harry Rice. I cannot believe I just finished this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Harry Rice. And I am out. 25 Days of Harry is done. Thank you all for staying with me this long. And I am out. Peace.